starts now. Good morning, Utah. Thank you for waking up with us. I'm Jillian Smuckler. And I'm Jordan Burroughs. In for Brian Carlson, it is 5 o'clock on this Wednesday morning. We begin with an update on that deadly shooting at a Salt Lake City apartment. Police now say they believe it started as an attempted robbery. It happened Monday night near 17th South and Redwood Road. Police say several people left the scene in separate cars. They found one of those cars on 11th South and Redwood Road and the other near South Temple and Redwood Road. Police say they believe all the people involved knew each other. At this point, there are no arrests and the investigation is ongoing. Now, in the wake of that shooting, Salt Lake City police say officers are working around the clock to address gun violence, but they need our help. Police Chief Mike Brown says there's been 30 robberies and 60 aggravated assaults involving a gun this year. He also says there's been 28 drive by shootings. Chief Brown says the number of guns ending up in the wrong people's hands is rising, but he tells us even one tip can help get those guns off the street. In the last two years, more guns have been sold in this city and across the country than in recent history. More guns sold, more guns stolen in burglaries, in car prowls, more guns in the hands of people that shouldn't have them. I was hoping the city's new gun buyback program will help lower the number of shootings we see. The first event will be held this Saturday at the Salt Lake City Public Safety Building. We're told the first 200 people to turn in their guns will receive up to $100. Happening now, Layton City Police are asking for help finding a missing man who may be in danger. You can see him here. Police say 56 year old Travis Hicks was last seen Monday morning, leaving his house to go to a gas station. They found his phone on the side of the road. Police say he takes several medications daily, so they believe he may be in danger without them. If you have any information, contact Layton City Police. Turning to Utah's wildfire season, a new fire is burning in Juab County this morning. Firefighters say the so-called Dutson fire sparked along I-15 yesterday near the city of Mona. Crews say a car dragging chains started this fire. Now, fortunately, those crews were able to get a handle on it fairly quickly, but they are reminding drivers to secure your chains before taking off. At last check, the fire is 29 acres and firefighters are hoping to have it fully contained by today. Firefighters say cars are one of the top causes for wildfires in Utah. Utah Forestry Fire and State Land says last year nearly 200 of the human caused fires were started by a car. Fire officials say driving over tall grass, dragging chains, worn out brake pads and faulty catalytic converters are all common causes of wildfires in Utah. The Partley's Canyon fire last summer was caused by a driver dragging their catalytic converter along the road on I-80. If it's you know, 600 degrees and it goes into grass and the fuel moisture in the grass is low enough that it's combustible at 500 degrees, then that spark will start that fire. Fire officials say one of the best things that someone can do to prevent wildfires is keep up on your car's regular maintenance needs. Time now is 504. Let's check your weather with meteorologist Thomas Skiboy. Thomas, any good news for our wildfire risk this week? Unfortunately not. High pressure is taking control of our weather and that's going to result in a dry pattern that's going to take us from now th through basically the early half of this weekend. Now there's a little bit of hope by the time we get towards the end of the weekend and early next week, but that's still more than a few days away. But with high pressure taking charge of our weather with those dry conditions, we're also going to see our temperatures soar. If you like summer like temperatures, the next few days, they're definitely going to be for you across the state. Currently this morning, everything is nice and quiet on the storm tracker radar, and it's going to be staying that way today. Now there will be some spots that see partly cloudy to partly sunny skies, and that's mainly going to be in the northern half of the state, while down in southern Utah, we'll be staying on the dry side of the or on the mostly sunny side of things. Here's the view in Cedar City where that's not any raindrops that are falling. That's just a lot of bugs flying around the camera. And it's really no surprise with how warm things have been. So we got probably a few mosquitoes flying around that camera with our Southern Utah University camera network. But here at ABC4 News Studios with our colonial flag, we're beginning to get that early bit of the sunrise glow. Not really seeing much in the way of any cloud coverage and a gentle southerly breeze. And we'll see the breeze pick up a little bit as we get into the afternoon. So we'll be looking at warm and breezy conditions and it's pretty mild outside right now. It's 60 degrees in Salt Lake City, 73 in St. George, 77 in Lake Powell. So there'll be plenty of spots out there this morning where you could get away with just a light sweater. But by this afternoon, a daytime high of 90 degrees in Salt Lake City. That's a bit on the toasty side as St. George will see a daytime high of 102 hot and mostly sunny across the Southwest Desert and be mindful of the fire risk, especially in Southern Utah. As we check our traffic out there this morning, we're not seeing any accidents in our drive 
times are looking pretty good across the area. Provo to Salt Lake City is 35 to 36 minutes. Safe travels. Well, President Biden signs a bill to rename the Provo Veterans Center in Orem after a Utah World War II hero. Utah Senator Mike Lee sponsored the bill to rename the center in honor of Colonel Gail S. Halverson, otherwise known as the Candy Bomber. Now, he died earlier this year and became a symbol of hope during the war. Halverson flew a plane dropping candy to German children in towns devastated by the war, earning him the Candy Bomber name. Several people in Murray, including an off-duty nurse, are being recognized for their life-saving work. This morning, we're getting a look at some incredible body cam footage of them doing just that. It happened when Darren Ewell went into cardiac arrest while playing on a baseball field. That's when Dania Topham, an off-duty nurse with Intermountain Healthcare, rushed the field to help. And in my head, I'm just thinking, okay, what do I need to do? What am I going to do? Topham started doing CPR immediately. Last night, city officials gave Dania, as well as several first responders from both the Murray Fire and Police Department, life-saving awards. Time now is 5.07. Coming up on GMU, trips to the gas station are packing a punch. Hear how record high gas prices are impacting Utah drivers and their summer travel plans. Salt Lake B is going to be come from behind win. Plus, Alex Barcelo works out for the Jazz. We'll hear from him coming up in your morning sports report. Time now for ABC4 News Sports with...
coaches in the entire state. Kyle Whittingham, who's a big Jazz fan, what his reaction was to Snyder's resignation. Sad. I, I don't know him real well, but I've, I've had a chance to interact a little bit with him. But what a heck of a coach. Uh, respect everything he's done here. And uh, we're going to miss him. There comes a time when you need a new voice and a new, a new leader. And, uh, you know, obviously he felt that was time for him right now. And, and uh, I'm getting kind of close to that in my career. Ooh, sounds like change may be coming for him, too. Here's what's coming up in local sports tonight. The Salt Lake Bees take on the Tacoma Rainiers at 635 at Smith's Ballpark. Also tonight, Game 3 of the NBA Finals, Golden State and Boston. That's a 7 o'clock tip right here on ABC4. Then tomorrow, it's an afternoon game. Bees and Rainiers will finish their series at 12.05. That's your morning sports report. Have a great day. Well, folks, we watch an NBA Finals from their couches. Yeah. But there are bees games tonight. There are. What can they expect, Thomas? It's going to be a little bit toasty at first pitch, but I'm thinking for the most part, it's going to be looking pretty good, especially if anybody wants to good, go good. to a baseball game. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Baseball weather. We're happy to have you back, Thomas, by the way. It's good to be back. It was a little bit of a struggle waking up this early <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> I yep. figure, yeah. Well, we're but we're glad to have you. But it's, it's definitely good to be here. But for this morning, we're starting off nice and comfortable. Just keep in mind by this afternoon, it's going to feel a little bit like summertime along the Wasatch Front, but as you make your way down to southern Utah, there's no doubt that it's going to feel all bit of summertime. So today is going to be a warm and breezy day. We have high pressure that's really starting to take charge of our weather. Temperatures are going to start to soar really starting today, and you're going to feel it for our Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on what's going to mostly be a dry pattern moving forward as well. So here's a look at the bigger picture with the satellite and radar and on the satellite and radar. Everything is relatively quiet. We have a ridge of high pressure now working its way in. We'll likely see a few of these clouds from our west move in later on today to bring us partly cloudy to partly sunny skies in northern Utah. But we're just going to be looking at two drive conditions for us to be able to squeeze anything out of that. But in the meantime, we got some beautiful views out there this morning. This is the view from Sundance. Look at all the twinkling stars behind Timpanogos and there is still at least a little bit of snow on Timpanogos, but as we go from today through our Thursday, Friday, Saturday, with how warm it's going to be, it's going to be a struggle to keep any snow up on the mountains that don't really have a lot left over. Here's the view from Red Cliffs Lodge down in Moab, and this is going to be a very pretty sunrise as well. So no matter where you are, chances are you're probably going to see a pretty sunrise. And when you head outside, it's going to be rather comfortable as well. Only a few spots you're really going to need a sweater. And this afternoon, we'll see those temperatures warming up very quickly. We'll see a daytime high making a run at 90 degrees in Salt Lake City, which is about I would say eight, around eight degrees above average, if not a little bit more than that. 85 degrees in Brigham City, 87 degrees in Heber, even Park City makes a run at 80 degrees today, 91 degrees in Spanish Fork. Then as we travel our way down into the central half of the state, 90 degrees in Castledale, 87 degrees in Emory, 93 degrees in Gunnison, 96 degrees in Green River. Then in southern Utah, we'll see a daytime high of 83 degrees in Bryce Canyon, 91 in Escalante, 90 degrees in Blanding. And for those of you in St. George, you got into the triple digits yesterday. You're likely going to get into the triple digits once again for today. But in Salt Lake City, that daytime high is going to continue to build close to 90 degrees today. Low to mid 90s for our Thursday, likely middle 90s by Friday. And then we could see our daytime high in the upper 90s by Saturday. And if we get to 98 degrees, we will at least tie the record. But there's a chance that we could break the record. And so far this year, we have not hit the 95 degree mark. We have hit the 90 degree. But if we get to 95 degrees, which is likely over the next few days, will be a little bit ahead of schedule and there is a chance a chance that we could get close to 100 degrees on Saturday as well. And of course, if we get to the 100 degrees, we'll be ahead of schedule with that normally happening in the beginning of July. But high pressure that just results in dry air, a dry air mass above. We got sinking air towards the surface, a clear, stable conditions, and it could lead to record warmth, especially by the second half of this week into the upcoming weekend. In St. George, 102 for a high today, but we could be around 105 by Friday, and maybe around 107 on our Saturday. And then as we look at the law on the Wasatch front, that daytime high climbing from the low 90s today to the middle 90s possible by Friday, then upper 90s on Saturday with us seeing a potential cold front arriving going from Sunday into Monday where the temperature will come down and we could add a slight chance for some wet weather. So keep your fingers crossed. We definitely need all the moisture we can get. As we check our traffic out there this morning, we're not seeing any accidents and our drive times are looking really good. Salt Lake City to Ogden, 30 to 31 minutes. Safe travels. And don't forget, if you want to take your weather with you on the go today, just download the Pinpoint Weather app. All you have to do is go to the Apple App Store or Google Play or simply scan the QR code right there on your screen. All right, thank you, Thomas. It is 517 this morning. Still ahead on GMU, a terrifying attack caught on camera.
Hear what happened to this woman thrown onto the train tracks in New, in New York City. And handling a cow on the loose the old fashioned way. See how some cowboy skills saved the day on an Oklahoma highway. Welcome back. In national news, a new video captures the terrifying moment a man pushes a woman onto the subway tracks in New York City. Now, we do want to warn you, it may be disturbing. 30-year-old Theodore Ellis, seen in this video here, bear-hugging that woman before just tossing her onto those tracks. Just terrifying to watch. Now, fortunately, right after that, witnesses helped her get back onto the platform before the next train rolled in. But we're told she has a broken collarbone along with cuts and bruises to her head. Police say the attack was unprovoked and the two of them don't know each other. This morning, Ellis is facing assault and reckless endangerment charges. Porch pirates are, are now targeting people ordering baby formula to their door. New video out of Colorado shows UPS leaving a box containing baby formula at one mother's door. Within 30 minutes, someone runs out of their car, snags the formula, which is worth about $100. The mother claims UPS left the package in plain sight. UPS says it's working to retrain the driver and resolve the issue with the mother. In Sandy, there's a new initiative to fight an alarming surge in car and home burglaries. The police department is helping start a neighborhood watch group. Now, yesterday, community members met with officers to discuss how it all work. We're told the police department will have extra patrols in your neighborhood while you're away. And neighbors will be keeping an eye out for anything suspicious. So if you want to start a neighborhood watch where you live, just fill out a website or fill out a form rather on their website. In consumer news, the cost of gas across the country continues to soar, setting new record highs, especially at the uh, pumps here in Utah. According to AAA, the average price for a gallon of gas in Utah is nearly $5. It's at $4.99, a new all-time record high. As crude oil prices continue to rise, gas prices are expected to follow, especially as summer travel heightens demand. One driver tells us high gas prices are changing her typical vacation plans. Usually what we do is road trips, and so that is really kind of curtailing a lot of our plans that we're hoping to have. So we were going to go down and see some of the national parks. That may not happen this year. Experts say Utahns won't be seeing any relief anytime soon, but they have a few suggestions to save them some money at the pump, like using UTA and rideshare when possible and keeping up uh, with your car maintenance. 
Well, some fathers like to bond with their sons over things like baseball, but this father-son duo spends their quality time 1,000 feet in the air. Eight-year-old Sam Baker and his dad Joe just finished climbing the Moonlight Buttress in Zion National Park. Now, keep in mind, that's a 1,200-foot climb. Sam's obsession with the extreme sport comes from his parents, who fell in love while climbing together. He is afraid of a few things. Why don't you share him the things you're afraid of? Spiders and sharks. But I'm glad there's no sharks up there. <laughs> now, Sam says the best part about climbing is getting to spend time with his dad. So sweet. We're told they'll be back at it again at the end of the summer. Sam will be the first eight-year-old to try climbing El Capitan, which is the biggest wall of its kind here in the U.S. Eight years old, you guys. I mean, that's so impressive. Well, and the, wanting to spend time with his dad. That's the first adorable. sentence is very true, too. Thomas, I don't know about you, but that's how I bonded with my dad was baseball. I yeah, wasn't for climbing 1,200-foot sure. mountains. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just, just a little incredible. bit, especially with that with some vertical climbs. No, thank you. No sharks up there, though, which is nice. <laughs> good thing. How's the weather looking for anyone who wants to hike today? Well, it, it honestly looks pretty good, but we're getting to the point of the year where if anybody's going to be going for a hike, especially in the afternoons and early evenings, just make sure that you have that extra hydration because it is going to be on the toasty side of things. And we're only going to crank the temperature up even more as we go throughout the next few days. But here's the view from Lake Mountain overlooking the Utah Valley. Absolutely beautiful right here. This is going to be a beautiful sunrise right behind Timpanogos here, but an absolutely beautiful view from the Wasatch Front. So this morning, if you have an unobstructed view of the horizon, chances are you're going to see a pretty sunrise as well. Here's the view down in St. George. The camera's still black and white, but pretty soon we'll see this go to full color. And it'll show all the glory of the beautifulness down in St. George with our Dixie Tech camera. But in St. George, after I would say a comfortable but warm start to the morning, it's going to see we're going to see the temperature heat up rather quickly down across the southwest desert, where right now we're sitting at 73 degrees in St. George, 60 degrees currently in Salt Lake City and Logan. Chances are you're probably going to want at least a sweater as you head out the door. But by this afternoon, you're likely going to be in the 80s, so you won't need it by this afternoon. 64 degrees currently in Moab. It's 39 degrees in Ely. That's one of the cool spots out there. And of course, if you're in the higher elevations, you'll need that extra layer as well. But look at the recreation forecast over the next few days. Today we'll see a daytime high near 80 degrees in Park City, partly cloudy to partly sunny skies, 100 degrees in Lake Powell, but just look at Thursday into Friday. We'll see that daytime high likely at or above 100 degrees in Lake Powell over the next few days if you're going to be going down doing some water skiing. Looks to be some great weather while Moab could see that daytime high of 103. By the time we get into Friday with mostly sunny skies, as Park City could even climb into the middle 80s as well. So if you're going to be going out for any recreation over the next few days, it's going to be warm across across the state. As we check our traffic out there this morning, we're not seeing any accidents and drive times are still looking really good across the area. Salt Lake City 212 is a 31 to 32 minute drive. So if you're getting ready to hit the road out there, really not finding too many issues. And we'll continue to keep a close eye on traffic as I walk my way over to the desk. So Come on over, Thomas. We're going to get there. We're going to get there and we're there. You're not, you're <laughs> not used to the walk. Yeah. It's I, a far walk. He it exercises. <laughs> He's good. Yeah. Maybe maybe my watch will give me a little bit of a credit for that. <laughs> you got there like is some uh, good exercise in Oklahoma. Ooh, you is ready there? For this one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a wild aerial view of a rogue cow on the move. And okay. You'll see this cow running down a busy highway in Oklahoma. Oh boy. After getting loose. Is this not the most Oklahoma thing you've seen though? Like. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Here we go. Wait, just wait for it. Obviously, I'm gonna get car you. over there. He sees <gasps> the cow. You got an old-fashioned cowboy over there. It's oh. Interstate 40. Cowboy on a horse. He's got the hat on. Horse running after him. He got him, right? I think he gets him right here. Wrangles him up. Yeah, yeah. You'll see another one coming, too. The other guy kind of gets uh, gets the guy by the uh, cow's like hindquarters or legs, whatever you call them in the animal world. I mean, I In the animal like, world. I don't know. <gasps> I am like the least Ooh. farmer guy oh. of all time. Oh boy! Yeah, well, they got him under you're control. You driving down I forty in Oklahoma, and all of a sudden, rodeo breaks out. Yeah, that's a way to. <laughs> I'm evil. I'm always rooting for the animal. I'm like, go, go! They won't catch you. Good excuse for traffic, though. Hopefully, uh, your employer would be okay with that. Wait for work. There's a cow on the road. <laughs> I know that's a pretty good excuse. <laughs> got to move over. Oh boy! Time now is five twenty six. Next on GMU, writing gay marriage into law. Why a state senator says it's time to put marriage equality on the books here in Utah. Plus, the biggest budget proposal in St. George history. Here, what leaders are planning to do with over half a billion dollars. But first, here are your day's tech bites.
In today's Tech Bytes, improved sound for YouTube TV. There is now 5.1 audio support for Google TV, Android TV, and Roku streaming devices. The immersive audio should kick in automatically for users with compatible hardware. Instagram has joined TikTok and Twitter by allowing users to pin three posts or reels to their profiles. Once something is pinned, it will appear at the top left corner of your grid. Additional pins will move earlier ones to the right. Finally, a one-of-a-kind Taco Bell restaurant opens today in a Minneapolis suburb. Four drive through lanes have vertical delivery tubes which bring orders from the kitchen right to your vehicle. Customers can order at a kiosk in the drive through lane or through an app. Taco Bell hinted the new restaurant will be coming to other states. Liv Moss, those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. You're watching Good Morning Utah with Brian Carlson, Jillian Smuckler, and Thomas Keyboy. Welcome back. I'm Jordan Burroughs in for Brian Carlson. And I'm Jillian Smuckler. It's 530 on this Wednesday. We begin with an update on that deadly shooting in a Salt Lake City apartment. Police now say they believe it started as an attempted robbery. It happened Monday night near 17th South and Redwood Road. Police say several people left the scene in separate cars. They found one of them on 11th South and Redwood Road and the other near South Temple and Redwood Road. A police say they believe all the people involved knew each other. At this point, there are no arrests and the investigation is ongoing. Now, in the wake of that shooting, Salt Lake City police say officers are working around the clock to address gun violence, but they also need our help. Police Chief Mike Brown says there's been 30 robberies and 60 aggravated assaults involving a gun this year. He also says there's been 28 drive by shootings. Now, Chief Brown says the number of guns ending up in the wrong people's hands is going up, but he tells us even one tip can help get those guns off the street. In the last two years, more guns have been sold in this city and across the country than in recent history. More guns sold, more guns stolen in burglaries, in car prowls, more guns in the hands of people that shouldn't have them. Now he's hoping the city's new gun buyback program will help lower the number of shootings we see here. The first event will be held this Saturday at the Salt Lake City Public Safety Building. We're told the first 200 people to turn in their guns will receive up to $100. Utah County Sheriff's Office is starting their Teachers Academy tonight. The program prepares school staff for what to do in an active shooter situation.
The sheriff's office says it has around 40 school staff members participating in the six course academy. The staff members range from teachers, janitors and even school counselors. The deputy shooting blanks allows teachers to recognize what a shooting sounds like and how they should react. Uh, hopefully give them an opportunity to be able to react earlier and react in a way that dramatically increases the likelihood of a positive outcome for them and for their kids. You just heard from Sergeant Cannon. He says the class hopes to give teachers a better sense for what feelings they could have during an active shooter situation so that the instructor can help guide them through those initial emotions. Salt Lake City Police arrest a man they say crashed a stolen car, injuring a child. Officers say they saw a man and a woman walk up to a stolen car and get inside it yesterday. Now they tried to block the car, but it took off, crashing into another car at an intersection. You see the aftermath right there. Now crews took a nine year old boy in that car to the hospital. The two suspects are in police custody. Turning now to Utah's wildfire season, a new fire is burning in Juab County. Firefighters are calling this the Dudson Fire. It's burning on I-15 near the city of Mona. The fire causing one southbound lane to close yesterday. Crews said car fire spread to the wildland and started the fire. Right now it's estimated at around 15 acres and there is no word on containment. Meanwhile, we're learning that cars are to blame for causing a large number of the wildfires here in Utah. The Utah Forestry Fire and State Land says nearly 200 human caused fires were started by a car last year. Firefighters say things like driving over tall grass, dragging chains, having worn out brake pads and faulty catalytic converters all caused those fires. And crews say our current drought brings the risk of car fires way up. If it's you know, 600 degrees and it goes into grass and the fuel moisture in the grass is low enough that it's combustible at 500 degrees, then that spark will start that fire. Now firefighters say one of the best things you can do to prevent wildfires is make sure to keep up with your car's maintenance. Time now is 534, which means it's time for your weather on the forest with meteorologist Thomas Giboy. And Thomas, you know, those temperatures in southern Utah later this week, it's not looking good for our fire risk. Well, and it just not starting today, really, where we're going to see daytime highs likely around 100 degrees, if not a little bit hotter than that down in St. George. And we're looking at dry conditions as well as high pressures in control of our weather. The relative humidity values, they're not terrible currently, but it's 17% down in Lake Powell and as we go from this morning into the afternoon look what happens to the relative humidity values likely going to be anywhere between 10 and 15 percent and this particular future cast showing that in southeastern Utah that relative humidity could be anywhere between 5 and 10 percent so that relative humidity will definitely be staying on the low side of course things get a little bit better during the nighttime hours but just be mindful of the ongoing fire risk down in southern Utah, especially if you're going to be heading to any of our national parks. Avoid dragging chains with your cars. Just be extra cautious in southern Utah. Here's the view from St. George looking absolutely beautiful in St. George. Should be a pretty sunrise behind the Red Rock, and we're also going to be getting a pretty sunrise along the Wasatch Front, starting to get a little bit more of that golden glow with a gentle southeasterly breeze. We're sitting at 60 degrees in Salt Lake City, so a pretty mild start to the morning where you might be fine with it. Just a t-shirt outside 60 degrees currently in Cedar City, 61 in Hanksville, and it's 73 degrees in St. George. Our dog walking forecast is going to be a great morning to do so. We'll be in the upper 70s by 11 o'clock this morning. So as we get into the afternoon, it might get a little bit too toasty for your dog out there as we'll see a daytime high of 90 degrees. But in St. George, 102 and with breezy conditions and low relative humidity, of course, we'll be keeping a very close eye on that fire risk. As we check our traffic out there this morning, we're not seeing any accidents and our drive times. They're still looking good across the area. Park City to Salt Lake City is a 31 to 32 minute drive right on time. Safe travels. All right, thank you, Thomas. A Utah State Senator wants to legalize gay marriage here in the Beehive State. Senator Derek Kitchen says the laws on the books only recognize marriage between a man and a woman. A federal judge struck that down in 2014. Now Kitchen is introducing a bill to officially make marriage equal. This comes after a leaked Supreme Court draft opinion suggested the court could overturn the federal right to an abortion, sparking fears that same-sex marriage could be next. The fact that reproductive health care is being possibly taken away from half of our population, we should all be worried about our other fundamental rights that have been obtained to the courts over the last decade or so. Senator Kitchen says legalizing the right to same-sex marriage in Utah would ensure legal protections for all couples, regardless of Supreme Court decisions. In Ogden, a man is accused of sexually abusing a child that his mother was babysitting. 
According to arrest records, 29-year-old Louis Harita sexually assaulted a boy inside their family home. Police say the victim told them Harita would force him to engage in sexual activity. We're told a medical examination matched the victim's claims. Harita is now in the Weber County Jail facing several charges. In southern Utah, the St. George City Council is considering the largest budget proposal in city history. The $503 million budget would be nearly $80 million more than last year. The increase is in an effort to address the city's rapid growth. City leaders say nearly 40% of the funds would go toward utilities and about 20 of it would go toward public safety. About $68 million of the budget is just for water and sewer infrastructure. So everybody's aware that water is a big deal in St. George right now. We need to be really proactive when it comes to uh, protecting our water resources. The increased budget would be supported by raising property taxes. There is a public hearing to adopt the final budget on June 16th. In Salt Lake City, there's a new mile-long trail for you to hike or bike on. The first phase of the Folsom Trail officially opened yesterday. Now it runs from 10th West and Folsom Avenue to the North Temple Front Runner in Tracks Bridge. The 10-year project costs $3.5 million. The city is repurposing an abandoned railroad by Union Pacific and connecting the west side to downtown. Our west side is boxed in by rail and freeway corridors. It is so important for us to figure out how we punch through these boundaries that have been put on our west side neighborhoods and businesses. Now, Mayor Mendenhall says the Folsom Trail will help connect the west side to more open outdoor space. I know a lot of people are going to like that with these hot conditions we're seeing, really. Time now is 539. Still ahead on GMU, a pressure mounting for gun reform in Washington, D.C. See how survivors and celebrities are weighing in on the heated debate. Plus, don't forget, staying informed has never been easier. ABC4 News is there for you. To get your news straight to your phone, just download that ABC4 News app. All you have to do is scan that QR code right there on your screen. We're back after this.
today, survivors from the Uvalde, Texas school shooting will testify before a House committee on gun violence. Now, this includes that 11 year old who played dead during the shooting all to stay alive. This hearing comes as lawmakers rush to finalize a bipartisan agreement on gun reform. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. This morning, new video shows 11 year old Mia Cerillo clutching a blanket as she takes her first plane ever to Washington. The Uvalde shooting survivor will face Congress and recount how she had to cover herself in her classmates' blood and play dead to survive. Victims, families, and survivors of the Uvalde and Buffalo mass shootings are in Washington for multiple hearings to call on Congress to act on gun reform. My mother's life mattered. And your actions here today will tell us how much it matters to you. Leading up to the hearing, personal and emotional pleas. You're supposed to protect and serve. Teacher Arnolfo Reyes, who was I shot twice by the gunman in Uvalde, says he like cannot forgive law enforcement for taking more than an hour to stop the shooter who killed Absolutely. every student in his classroom. After everything, I get more angry because you have a bulletproof vest. I had nothing. And actor Matthew McConaughey, a Uvalde native and gun owner at the White House. We need responsible gun ownership, responsible gun ownership. We need background checks. We need to raise the minimum age to purchase an AR-15 rifle to 21. That last item, once a non-starter for Republicans, now under consideration. Two sources telling ABC News Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell privately expressed openness to raising the age to buy a semi-automatic rifle from 18 to 21. A group of bipartisan senators are aiming to have a compromise on a narrow set of proposals ready by the end of the week. Senator McConnell hasn't said anything publicly about the age requirement for AR-15s and privately, sources say, has not pushed for any specific gun policies. M1, ABC News, Washington. A reminder that ABC News will bring you live coverage of the gun reform hearing on Capitol Hill beginning at 8 a.m. on air and on the streaming channel ABC News Live. Time now for your weather on the fours. Good morning, Utah. Time is currently 544 here on this Wednesday morning. Happy Wednesday. We are halfway to the weekend. Our weather headlines include warm and breezy conditions, so that fire risk that will be continuing down, especially in southern Utah. High pressure really establishes itself today, and their temperatures will begin to soar, especially in northern Utah over the next few days, but they're already quite toasty down in southern Utah. That's only going to continue. And we're looking at a mostly dry pattern over the next, I would say, handful of days. But by Sunday into Monday, we could see some changes. But here's just the overall setup. <clears throat> Excuse me. The overall setup with our weather, especially by the time we get into Friday. High pressure, firmly in control over the Four Corners region. We got a dry air mass above, sinking air towards the surface, clear, stable conditions, and could lead to record warmth depending on the season. And then by Saturday, we could be talking about daytime highs near or above record territory. Here's a look at the satellite and radar across the western United States. Got a little bit of a ridge of high pressure building in currently. There are some clouds off to our west, and some of these clouds could find their way into our neighborhood, leading to partly cloudy to partly sunny skies this afternoon. But for the most part, we're going to be keeping those dry conditions in place. There's just a lot of dry air at the surface, so we're not going to be getting any moisture. Here's the view from Powder Mountain, an absolutely beautiful sunrise underway. You still got a little bit of snow off in the foreground there, but that snow, it's probably going to be all melted by the time we get towards the end of this week up at Powder Mountain. At Blanding in southeastern Utah, all nice and quiet here, so we got quiet conditions across the board if you're getting ready to head off to work or school. And our daytime high is going to be quite toasty. We'll see a daytime high of 83 degrees in Logan but we'll climb to 90 degrees in Salt Lake City. That's about 10 degrees above average in Manila. We'll see a daytime high of 82 degrees, 87 degrees in Roosevelt. Then as we make our way into the central half of the state, a daytime high of 91 in Oak City, 91 in Richfield, 96 degrees in Green River, near 90 degrees in Vernal at 88, and then 97 degrees in Hanksville, 93 in Lake Powell, and look at St. George, a daytime high of 102. 
quite toasty across the board. And as we begin, you're watching your weather for you. We get partly cloudy to partly sunny skies in the northern half of the state. The future cast trying to show a few echoes of moisture, but it's just going to be really dry. It's going to be hard to see any moisture reaching its way to the ground. Then high pressure firmly in control as we go into our Thursday. That heat will start to crank up, especially in northern Utah. Then high pressure squarely on top of us going into our Friday. It's going to be mostly sunny and daytime highs will be about 15 degrees above average. And Saturday could be even warmer compared to what we see on Friday. And we could see our daytime high in the upper 90s on Saturday. The record in Salt Lake City, 98 degrees. And that's what we're going with the forecast. And there's an outside chance that we get to 100 degrees on Saturday. But down in St. George and lower Washington County, we'll actually have an excessive heat watch begin to go into effect Friday afternoon through Saturday evening. Daytime highs on Friday and Saturday could range anywhere from 104 to 108 and overnight lows only dropping between 74 and 77 degrees, which means not a lot of relief as we make our way into the overnight hours. So down in St. George, that's something to keep in mind along with the fire risk as that daytime high 105 on Friday, 107 on Saturday, but some slightly cooler temperatures will be arriving early next week with the cold front and along the Wasatch front we will go from the low 90s today, possibly to the upper 90s by Saturday. Then that cold front arrives a slight chance between Sunday into Monday with daytime highs dialing back into the 70s should cool, feel quite feel, should feel nice into the early stretch of next week. As we check our traffic just within the last five minutes, we have two new accidents, but we'll get you that information coming up in about 10 minutes. Provo to Salt Lake City, 36 minutes in both directions. Safe travels. We're following breaking news of a deadly crash in South Salt Lake. You're taking a live look at the scene near 21st South and 6 West this morning. So you can see right there, two lanes are blocked off as police investigate. And UDOT says they're going to stay that way for another hour or so. Details about that crash are limited, but we know that a driver hit someone in the road who died on the scene. We're going to stay with this situation and, of course, bring you the latest updates both here on air and online at ABC4.com. All right, it's 548 on this Wednesday morning. Coming up on GMU, the ultimate King James memorabilia heads to the auction block. Find out how much you'll have to pay for this one-of-a-kind LeBron James trading card. Plus, a nail polish like no other. We'll tell you all about cheese brand Velveeta's foray into the makeup game.
All right, auctioneers call this the holy grail Ooh. of sports collectibles. Mm. A one-of-a-kind LeBron James trading card is expected to sell for more than $6 million at auction. You're kidding me. Uh, uh, Six seriously, the, million the dollars? trading cards with sports cards has been crazy. Looking at this is the triple logo man card. It's a single issue card featuring the 18 time NBA all star with patches from jerseys that LeBron actually wore while he was on the Cavaliers, the Heat uh, and also the LA Lakers. When it was issued, it kind of set off this hunt among collectors uh, and some have likened the search to Willy Wonka's golden ticket. I think this is worth more, more than probably a a little piece of gold, right? But someone discovered it during a live social media event. So uh, was it $9 million? Did I read that right? No, $6 million. So Just opening up a pack of cards and then it's, oh, yeah, look at that. I mean, as a kid, I would open up cards and, you know, they're worth a nickel, you know, 10 <laughs> cents. I never really, like, imagined myself. Yeah. LeBron James card, $6 million. That is insane. I mean, yeah. I can kind of, I mean, I know that cards have sold for a lot of money in the past. Yeah. But it's like the Honus Wagner card. Yeah. And the little one from the like the cigarette shop or whatever. But if you're happens. gonna spend six million dollars, like maybe get a house. How, how about well that works too, but yeah, and it's a what, beautiful car. Two, probably three inches Pay long, off two inches wide. But there's so many other things in the sports world that you can have, like jerseys, oh, yeah, front row too. seats, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. that too. Card instead. Status symbol. Probably. I mean for six million dollars that you should just buy steak into your favorite team. Very true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, from sports to cheese, for all you cheese lovers, <laughs> I love cheese. Well, who doesn't love cheese? Yeah. Well, I don't know Those if you're going to love it this much. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Velveeta <laughs> is launching a limited edition cheese scented nail polish. If any one of you hmm. say you're interested in this, I'm walking out right now. Well, That's I, sick. What if it was that flavored? Is nasty. Cheese flavored. I think I'd rather have that. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> a you're going to lick your, your nails? A little mid-morning snack? Okay, I don't that's know. nasty. So it comes in two colors, a red one named Finger Food and a yellow one named La Dolce Velveeta. See, it sounds delicious. And to make it even grosser, <laughs> they have nail stickers they ha of cheese. And the words on those are drip and creamy. Drip, drip, yeah. If I see someone's nails and it smells like cheese and then it says creamy on it. Today's drip. We're going to fight. Got the Velveeta. Nasty. Well, nasty, I guess I'll nasty. Order some. It's on Amazon. We'll probably get it in half an hour. Oh. There you go. Overnight ship. That's disgusting. Can you imagine? Mmm, mac and cheese. Like, if that's disgusting. <laughs> it would be hilarious if Velveeta did a blue cheese one. Oh. Well, it's kind of like how, like, Arby's started the vodka thing. It's just like a gimmick thing. Get the name out there. We've been talking about it, you know. Makes it entertaining. Ooh. No, Blech. thank you. I'm out. Blech. I'm out. I'm in. <laughs> Okay, fair I'll enough. I'll let you know how it goes. Thank you. How's our weather looking, Thomas? Let's get away from this. It's, it's, looking, sick. it's looking warm and good. Okay. I mean, it's going to be toasty outside by this afternoon, but this morning, beautiful sunrise. High and Reservoir up in Cache County. Doesn't really get much better than that. And then as we make our way down to southern Utah, we finally seen the camera with our Dixie Tech camera go from black and white to that beautiful sunrise glow. It's 73 degrees right now in St. George, so it's already a warm start to the morning. It's 60 degrees in Salt Lake City. We have plenty of spots in the 50s and 60s, but by this afternoon, we're making a run at 90 degrees along the Wasatch Front. Partly cloudy skies with a daytime high of 102 in St. George. Hot and mostly sunny, but just wait. It's going to get even warmer over the next few days, and your golfing forecast includes a daytime high of 90 degrees in Salt Lake City. Today could be in the middle 90s by Friday, and by Saturday, we could be in the upper 90s in Salt Lake City, while St. George could climb above 105. Now, as we check our traffic out there this morning, we're keeping a very close eye on that fatal accident 21st South at 6th West. So if you're traveling in that area, just keep in mind you might need to take an alternate route. But we also have a couple of accidents in Salt Lake City and also a new accident near Pleasant Grove. We'll get you that information coming up in our next hour. But from Salt Lake City to Ogden, 29 to 31 minutes, that's right on time. If you want to take your weather with you on the go today, just download the Pinpoint Weather app. All you have to do is go to the Apple App Store, Google Play, it's free, or simply scan the QR code right there on your screen. Sounds good. Thank you, Thomas. It's baby birthday time. Today we are celebrating Troy Oliver Nutson the third. Look at this the guy third. right here. The yes. third. Oh, precious. Look at those big eyes, too. He's turning one today. Oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Troy. Big day. He loves climbing at the gym, loves driving on the tractor with uh, his dad. He's just okay. the cutest thing ever. Happy birthday to you, Troy. And don't forget, we love celebrating all your birthdays out there. Make sure to send us a baby picture. Email it to news at abc4.com and put in the subject line, baby birthday. Ugh. He's cutest so cute. Baby. We always get the cutest baby photos. We do. It's like a competition at this point. And so a wide array. In. From, we had a, was, no, how much was it here yesterday? 103 year old woman yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll be back in like five seconds though, so stick with us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you at six o'clock.
People are solving conflict through pulling the trigger and firing a weapon. Now on GMU at 6, tackling gun violence in Salt Lake City. Hear what the police chief is asking people to do to keep the city safe, coming up. And a wildfire breaks out in Drub County. How it got started and how Utah drivers can prevent fires along our roads. And all of a sudden I just woke up in the hospital. Then an off-duty nurse saves a man's life. See how she managed to save a softball player going into cardiac arrest. And with high pressure taking control of our weather, we've already started to see warming temperatures, but the heat is really going to start to crank for the second half of this work week. We'll have the details on Good Morning Utah at 6 that starts right now. Live, we're there for you. Good Morning Utah at 6 starts now. Good morning, Utah. I'm Jordan Burroughs in for Brian Carlson. And I'm Jillian Smuckler. It's 6 o'clock on this Wednesday. We begin with an update on that deadly shooting at a Salt Lake City apartment. Police now say they believe it started as an attempted robbery. It happened Monday night near 17th South and Redwood Road. Police say several people left the scene in separate cars. Well, they found those cars, one of them on 11th South and Redwood Road and the other near South Temple in Redwood Road. Police say they believe all the people involved knew one another. At this point, there are no arrests and the investigation is ongoing. Now, in the wake of that shooting, Salt Lake City Police say officers are working around the clock to address gun violence, but they need our help. Police Chief Mike Brown says there's been 30 robberies and 60 aggravated assaults involving a gun this year. He also says there's been 28 drive-by shootings. Chief Brown says recently more guns are ending up in the wrong people's hands, but he tells us even one tip can help get those guns off the street. In the last two years, more guns have been sold in this city and across the country than in recent history. More guns sold, more guns stolen in burglaries, in car prowls, more guns in the hands of people that shouldn't have them. Now he's hoping the city's new gun buyback program will help lower the number of shootings we have here. The first event will be held this Saturday at the Salt Lake City Public Safety Building. We're told the first 200 people to turn in their guns will receive up to $100. And we're following breaking news this morning of a deadly crash in South Salt Lake. You're taking a live look at the scene near 21st South and 6 West this morning. So as you can see right there, two lanes are blocked off as police investigate. UDOT says they're going to stay that way for another hour or so. Now details about that crash are limited, but we know a driver hit someone in the road who died on scene there. We're going to be staying with the situation and of course bringing you the latest updates both here on air and online at ABC4.com. Happening now, Layton City Police are asking for help finding a missing man who may be in danger. You can see him here. Police say 56-year-old Travis Hicks was last seen Monday morning leaving his house to go to a gas station. They found his phone on the side of the road. Police say he takes several medications daily, so they believe he may be in danger without them. If you have any information, contact Layton City Police. In turning to Utah's wildfire season, a new fire is burning in Juab County this morning. Firefighters say the so-called Dutson Fire sparked along I-15 yesterday near the city of Mona. Crews say a car dragging chains started this fire. Now, fortunately, those crews were able to get a handle on it fairly quickly, but they are reminding drivers this morning to secure your chains before taking off. At last check, the fire is 29 acres, and firefighters are hoping to have it fully contained by later today. Firefighters say cars are one of the top causes for wildfires in Utah. Utah Forestry Fire and State Lands says last year nearly 200 of the human-caused fires were started by a car. Fire officials say driving over tall grass, dragging chains, worn-out brake pads, and faulty catalytic converters are all common causes of wildfires in Utah. The Parley's Canyon fire last summer was caused by a driver dragging their catalytic converter along the road on I-80. If it's you know, 600 degrees and it goes into grass and the fuel moisture in the grass is low enough that it's combustible at 500 degrees, then that spark will start that fire. Fire officials say one of the best things that you can do to prevent wildfires is keep up on your, regular, on your car's regular maintenance needs. All right, let's get a check of your weather with meteorologist Thomas Skiboy. Thomas, we're in the hundreds, uh, 100 degree plus temps mm -hmm. in St. George, getting close to that in Salt Lake and the Salt Lake Valley. Yeah, by later on this week into Saturday, we could be flirting with triple digits in Salt Lake City, and that's because we have a dome of high pressure that's really beginning to establish itself. And then for the second half of this week, we're going to be talking about some heat as this upper level high is going to be bringing dry conditions. We've got sinking air towards the surface, clear, stable conditions. 
And again, by Friday into Saturday, daytime highs will be close to record. So it is going to be quite toasty and it's going to be quite dry. But at least in the mornings, at least for this morning, it's nice and quiet. You're not going to be finding too many issues as you head off to work or school, but I would say most kids are probably out of school at this point. ABC 4 News Studios with our Colonial flag got just a little bit of cloud coverage looking absolutely beautiful. Then down in Cedar City, not a cloud in the sky. So a pretty start to the morning there with our Southern, with our Southern Utah University camera network. It's 59 degrees currently in Salt Lake City, a very comfortable start to the morning. 43 degrees in Logan, 57 degrees in Hanksville. Most spots this morning starting off with temperatures in the 50s, a few spots in the 40s. But you get down to southern Utah in the lower elevations where it's 75 degrees right now in St. George and 76 degrees in Lake Powell on our forecast today. We'll see a daytime high make a run at 90 degrees in Salt Lake City with a daytime high of 102 in St. George. So in St. George, if you have any plans this afternoon, keep that in mind. Pack plenty of hydration and be very mindful of the fire risk. And it's only going to be getting hotter in St. George over the next couple of days, and it's also going to be getting hotter in northern Utah as well. But as we check our traffic, we are following that fatal accident 21st South at 6th West. In Salt Lake City, we are also looking at a few accidents in Salt Lake City. One of those I-215 northbound got the crash at 20, 25th, exit 25 at 21st Street, and also an accident I-15 northbound near Pleasant Grove at exit 273. So a few accidents out there, but our drive times on the interstates are looking okay. Salt Lake City 212 is a 31 to 33 minute drive. Safe travels. Thank you, Thomas. Well, this morning, President Biden signs a bill to rename the Provo Veterans Center in Orem after a Utah World War II hero. Utah Senator Mike Lee sponsored the bill to rename the center of the center in honor of Colonel Gail S. Halverson, otherwise known as the Candy Bomber. He died earlier this year and became a symbol of hope during the war. Halverson flew a plane dropping candy to German children in those towns devastated by the war, earning him the Candy Bomber nickname. Several people in Murray, including an off-duty nurse, are being recognized for their life-saving work. This morning, we're getting a look at some incredible body cam footage of them doing just that. It happened uh, when Darren Ewell went into cardiac arrest while playing on the baseball field. That's when Dania Topham, an off-duty nurse with Intermountain Healthcare, rushed the field to help. And in my head, I'm just thinking, okay, what do I need to do? What am I going to do? Topham started doing CPR immediately. Last night, city officials gave Dania as well as several first responders from both the Murray Fire and Police Department life-saving awards. Time now is 6.07. Coming up on GMU, trips to the gas station are packing a punch. Hear how record high gas prices are impacting Utah drivers and their summer plans coming up. Salt Lake B is get a big come from behind win. Plus, Alex Barcelo works out for the Jazz. We'll hear from them coming up in your morning sports report.
Time now for ABC4 News Sports with Dana Green. Los Angeles Angels manager Joe Madden was fired. We'll see what that means for some of the former Salt Lake Bees that are with the Angels. They're taking on Tacoma. And we start with the Produ race. race. The uh, corn falls over. Shucks still wins the race. Bees were down 5 0 when they get it rolling. Keen Wong with the bases loaded. Doubles to center. Everyone scores. Gatewood, Sierra Harrison all come around. And then it's David McKinnon with a shot to left center. This thing almost gets out of here. It's a two run double off the top of the wall. We are all tied up. Then in the bottom of the fourth, two men on for Jack Mayfield. And he blasts this one out of the park. That's a three run shot. Bees lead it eight to five. The final nine to eight. Big come from behind win. Same two teams go at it tonight. Game four, the Eastern Conference Finals. The two-time defending champion Tampa Bay Lightning start fast and finish strong. Nikita Kucherov makes it 2-0 in the second. And then in the third period, Steven Stamkos jams in the rebound. The final 4-1. So that series is now all tied up at two games apiece. The Jazz have received permission to interview several candidates for the head coaching job, including assistants Johnny Bryant, Charles Lee, Will Hardy, and Joe Missoula. The Jazz also plan to interview Terry Stotts and Alex Jensen. Jazz brought in six more players for workouts, including former Weber State star Kobe McEwen and BYU's Alex Barcella, who's hoping for a shot in the NBA. Having spent the last three years at BYU, getting a chance to work out for the Jazz was extra special for Alex Barcelo. It means the world to me just because I, I got a lot of people here that I love in Utah, and uh, it feels good to be back here near the mountains. So I don't know. I'm excited to, that they invited me in for a workout, and I'm, I'm excited to see what comes from it. Barcelo knows he's probably not going to get drafted, but with his ability to shoot from distance, he was a 46% three-point shooter at BYU, he could find his way onto an NBA roster. Realistically, I'm probably not a lottery, but <laughs> you, guys, you guys know that. But I, I'm going to have to work hard and, and earn everything that I get, and I know that, that. you know I've never been handed anything my entire life, so I think I'm in the perfect spot to, to show what I got. Marcelo is a born leader, and whether he goes to the G League, Europe, or even the NBA, he's never going to listen to the doubters. I will never let anybody tell me that I can't do something. So I'm, I'm going to go prove it, and if someone tells me that I can't, then I'm, I'm going to go out there and try to prove them wrong. This has been a busy time for Barcelo. He's getting married next month, so planning a wedding and working out for NBA teams has been a bit stressful. It definitely has taken an emotional toll on us, but I'm just happy that I have people like my fiance Zoe and my sisters and my mom that I can count on and lean on uh, to help me through this process. I'm so thankful for her and for people like that around me that can, can help just keep me motivated. Well, with Quinn Snyder resigning after eight years with the Jazz, we asked one of the longest tenured coaches in the entire state, Kyle Whittingham, who's a big Jazz fan, what his reaction was to Snyder's resignation. Sad. I, I don't know him real well, but I've, I've had a chance to interact a little bit with him. But what a heck of a coach. Uh, respect everything he's done here. And uh, we're going to miss him. There comes a time when you need a new voice and a new, a new leader. And... Uh, you know, obviously he felt that was time for him right now, and and uh, I'm getting kind of close to that in my career. Ooh, sounds like change may be coming for him too. Here's what's coming up in local sports tonight: the Salt Lake Bees take on the Tacoma Rainiers at 6:35 at Smith's Ballpark. Also tonight, Game Three of the NBA Finals: Golden State and Boston. That's a seven o'clock tip right here on ABC4. Then tomorrow it's an afternoon game: Bees and Rainiers will finish their series at 12:05. That's your morning sports report. Have a great day. All right, well, Thomas just asked, you know, who do I have for tonight's yeah. NBA Finals? Yeah. You're going to say the Warriors, Warriors. right? Warriors. Anyone but the Celtics. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you got to go to the Celtics? That to you, I'm though. a Lakers fan. Warriors. Oh, okay, that's yeah. true. Well, I but, think, but being a Lakers fan, you can't root for the Warriors, right? I would rather root for the Warriors than root for the Celtics. Because they're in the, oh. they're like in the general vicinity? We just don't like them. What, the Well, Warriors? this finals really doesn't close? work out well for you being a Lakers fan, does it? No. I mean, I don't like Boston sports either, but I feel like it's a little bandwagon to root for the Warriors. I mean, Boston's story has been great in the postseason. Yeah. I mean, they beat my Bucks. So. Yeah. And then, well, the Bucks beat them last year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was rooting for your team before this, Thomas. Well, the Celtics took them down. So, I mean, I, it's going to be hard for the Warriors and to, to really show up in that kind I mean, to be fair. Yeah. Steph Curry. 
Yeah. Steph he might, he might, he, that's he, all you have to say is Steph Curry. Yeah, he might drop 40, 50 points, and they might win. There so we'll see. Yeah. Well, locally, we've got some bees games, so people are going to want to know uh, what the weather's going to be like out there. Yeah, so first pitch, it's probably going to be a bit on the toasty side of things, but as we get through the evening, we'll be looking at some pretty comfortable temperatures, but are there for you headlines today include warm and breezy conditions for today. High pressure is really beginning to establish itself. Temperatures are really <laughs> going to start to really soar going from today Thursday into Friday with Saturday near or above records and then a dry pattern will continue through the rest of this work week. Maybe by Sunday we see some changes to this. There are some clouds off to our west, but that wet weather is not going to be able to find its way towards us. We'll likely see partly cloudy to partly sunny skies in the northern half of the state by later on while we'll keep mostly sunny skies down south. An absolutely beautiful sunrise is underway though at Deer Valley. Doesn't look like we have really much any snow left up at Deer Valley. But looking towards Jordan L Reservoir, that's just a very pretty way to start this Wednesday morning. Happy Wednesday, by the way. We are halfway to the weekend, and then as we make our way down into southern Utah for some reason, maybe the clicker will go, there we go, right Cliffs Lodge down in Moab. As we're getting the sunrise, getting ready to go right above the horizon there, a very calm Colorado River, and not seeing a cloud in the sky on this early Wednesday morning. So very pretty <laughs> and very comfortable as well. But this afternoon, we're going to be on the toasty side. We'll make a run at 90 degrees in Salt Lake City, 84 degrees in Tuella, 91 degrees in Spanish Fork, partly cloudy to partly sunny skies in the northern half of the state. We'll see partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies in central and southern Utah with a daytime high climbing into the 90s in plenty of spots with 102 down in St. George. Even Bryce Canyon today will be in the lower 80s. Again, all of this being being driven by high pressure that's beginning to settle in. So we'll see extra cloud coverage and really not going to see any moisture be able to find its way to the ground today. And then tomorrow, daytime highs will be quite a bit above average. And on Friday, those daytime highs could be about 15 degrees plus above average with it only getting toastier going into Saturday. So middle 90s, a possibility on Friday in Salt Lake City with possibly getting into the upper 90s and maybe flirting with 100 degrees. And if we get to 98 degrees on Saturday, we will tie the record. But down in St. George, we already saw the temperature get over 100 degrees yesterday, and it's only going to be getting hotter from here, folks. From Friday into Saturday, we could be looking at daytime highs between 104 and 108, with overnight lows only dropping between 74 and 77 degrees across the southwest desert in lower Washington County, which means we'll have an excessive heat watch go into effect. It is going to be dangerously hot by the time we get into the end of this week into the upcoming weekend. So not only keep that in mind, but also be very mindful of the fire risk down in southern Utah over the next handful of days. But as we look at the seven day forecast in St. George, we get 102 today, 104 for our Thursday and possibly up to 107 on Saturday. There's a cold front that should be arriving Sunday into Monday to bring us some relief into the early stretches of next week, but we'll be staying mostly on the dry side in St. George and on the Wasatch front low 90s today, climbing possibly into the middle 90s by Friday, upper 90s Saturday. Then with the cold front arriving Sunday into Monday, we'll add a slight chance for wet weather as those daytime highs dial back into the 70s. So there will be some relief early next week. As we check our traffic, we're still following the fatal accident 21st and that 6th Street in Salt Lake City. If you're going to be traveling in that area, you're probably going to want to find an alternate route. But we also have an accident I-215 northbound at exit 25 and I-15 northbound near Pleasant Grove at exit 273. If you're getting out on the interstates, our drive time still looking good. Park City to Salt Lake City, 31 to 33 minutes. Safe travels. All right, thank you, Thomas. It is 618 on this Wednesday morning. Coming up next on GMU, trips to the gas station are packing a punch. Hear how record high gas prices are impacting Utah drivers and their summer travel plans. And as we head to the break, we leave you with a live look at our camera, our doTERRA downtown camera. It is a beautiful day out there. We'll be right back after this break.
This week, Apple is holding its uh, Worldwide Developers Conference. Now, that's where several announcements are made, including the ability to edit and unsend iMessages. Reporter Rich Jamiro explains in today's TechSmart. After two years on Zoom, I was back on a plane, headed to Apple Park in Cupertino. Sure, the ride share from the airport was overpriced, but that didn't matter right now. Let's start the show. This was the first time thousands of developers, journalists, and Apple employees were back in person for WWDC. There's nothing like actually getting to handle the products in person. There's nothing like seeing the executives and asking them questions in person. It's the company's annual get together for the folks who actually code the apps we use. It felt like a different Apple event for sure. Going up to the third floor here on the Apple campus. Also a rare opportunity to check out Apple's sprawling headquarters. You come here and you're like amazed and even capturing footage just doesn't do it justice. It's just beautiful. An engineering marvel of glass and curves embracing nature. The glass here it's so clear that you literally don't know where it's right there. You don't even know where it is, barely. Sure, there were announcements like the ability to edit and unsend messages, split Apple Pay purchases into four payments with no interest, and easily share your iCloud library with a family member. But no talk of virtual reality, which many expect to be Apple's next big thing. But I was expecting to see maybe a little more emphasis in the kind of experiences that we might have eventually with AR slash VR. There was hardware. The new MacBook Air is thinner, it's lighter, it's faster, it has a new M2 chip inside. Looks pretty good too. Seeing that new MacBook Air as well, especially in the midnight color, I gotta say that definitely caught my eye. In the end, it's Apple, and even the tiniest changes affect millions in a big way. So you're seeing the hints of the big thing that we're all waiting for. In the meantime, just relentless iteration and refinement of the products people love. In Cupertino, I'm Rich Demiro, and you are Tech Smart. No free ads. But I yeah. do love Apple. Yeah. And I love the ideas they always come up with, but they do make you feel like you need, you need to like stay on top of it. Absolutely. They come up with like stuff every year and it's like, uh -huh. oh, I need to update my phone every six months. I gotta do this, this, and that. But I'm a sucker for the Apple products. I am too, but that unsend uh, feature that Risky. we're gonna get, that's good. I think uh, everyone can probably use that at one point in their life. You've never sent a text to no, somebody? No, yeah, I have, but as I was saying earlier, it's kind of like, get into some weird murky waters with like, did you send this, did you not? Like with work, with relationships, I don't know. Oh, okay, well I think that you have a little bit of experience in this. I'm excited <laughs> for it. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, moving on in consumer news. The cost of gas continues to soar this morning, setting new record highs at the pump right here in Utah. According to AAA, the average price for a gallon of gas in Utah is nearly $5. It's $4.96, which is a new all-time record. And as crude oil prices continue to rise, experts expect those gas prices to follow. One driver tells us these gas prices are changing her typical vacation plans. Usually what we do is road trips, and so that is really kind of curtailing a lot of our plans that we're hoping to have. So we were going to go down and see some of the national parks. That may not happen this year. Now experts have a few suggestions to save money at the pump, like using UTA and rideshare, as well as keeping up with your car maintenance. From Utah's most accurate forecast, here's a pinpoint weather update. And good morning, Utah. As we're starting off here on this Wednesday morning, all is nice and quiet. You're not going to find many issues as you get ready to head out the door. High pressure is starting to control our weather. We will see a little bit more cloud coverage filter its way in northern Utah today, but we'll be staying on the dry side as high pressure will block just about any, all, any moisture from getting to us, not only for today, but really into the next few days as well. Here's a view from down in St. George with our Dixie Tech camera. A pretty sunrise that's currently underway, but it's going to get quite hot very quickly down in St. George by this afternoon. will likely be above 100 degrees in the Colonial Flag here at ABC4 News Studios. That is just a pretty sunrise out there this morning, and it's going to be a nice morning to take your dog for a walk and along the Wasatch Front as our temperature will climb from the upper 50s now into the lower 80s by your lunchtime. So if you're going to be out by later this afternoon, it might be a good idea to hold off until this evening to take your dog for a walk. But if you're going to be hitting the links today, we'll see a daytime high of around 90 degrees in Salt Lake City, but the temperatures will only continue to warm up. Middle 90s possible by our Friday, and we could see upper 90s by Saturday, which would put us squarely in record territory. But down in St. George, we could actually find a temperature above 105 by Saturday, and there's going to be an excessive heat watch that goes into effect in St. George by Friday into Saturday. As we check our traffic, 21st at 7th and 6th Street, where we have a fatal accident. So if you're going to be traveling in South Salt Lake in that area, 
make sure you take an alternate route. But if you're going to be getting ready to hit the road on the interstates, our drive times are looking good as we're not seeing any accidents out on the interstates for the most part. And most of those accidents from earlier look like they're in the clearing stages. But Salt Lake City to Ogden, 30 to 31 minutes. Safe travels. All right, thank you, Thomas. In national news, new video captures the terrifying moment. A man pushes a woman onto the subway tracks in New York City. We do want to warn you, it may be disturbing. 30 year old Theodore Ellis seen in this video here. He's bear hugging a woman before throwing her onto the tracks. Witnesses did help her get back onto the platform before the next train rolled in, but she has a broken collarbone along with cuts and bruises to her head. Police say the attack was unprovoked and the two did not know each other. This morning, Ellis is facing assault and reckless endangerment charges. And we're following breaking news out of Salt Lake City this morning. Utah Highway Patrol says a girl was hit by a driver. Now you're taking a live look at I-215 and 25th North. We're going to get you that camera here in just a second. We're told that crash this morning actually happened a couple blocks away from that. So details about the crash are limited, but we're told a 15 year old girl was hit and is in serious condition this morning. Of course, we're working to get you more information on this. We'll keep you updated both here online on air and online at abc4.com. Some fathers like to bond with their sons over things like baseball, but this father son duo spending their quality time 1000 feet in the air. Eight year old Sam Baker of Colorado just finished a major climb in Zion National Park. Sam and his father Joe climbing the moonlight buttress, a 1200 foot climb. Sam's obsession with the extreme sport comes from his parents who fell in love with climbing together. He is afraid of a few things. Why don't you show him the things you're afraid of? Spiders and sharks, but I'm glad there's no sharks up there. Sam says the best part about climbing is spending time with his dad and they'll be back at it again in Yosemite. At the end of the summer, Sam will be the first eight year old ever to attempt El Capitan, the biggest wall of its kind in the U.S. All right, as we head into the break, we'll leave you with a live look of downtown Salt Lake City. Such a beautiful morning on this Wednesday. Good morning, Utah. We'll be right back. Live, we're there for you. Good morning, Utah at 6.30 starts now. Good morning, Utah. Thank you for waking up with us. I'm Jillian Smuckler. And I'm Jordan Burroughs in for Brian Carlson. It is 6.30 on this Wednesday morning. We begin with an update on that deadly shooting in a Salt Lake City apartment. Police now say they believe it started as an attempted robbery. It happened Monday night near 17th South and Redwood Road. Police say several people left the scene in separate cars. They did find those cars, one of them on 11th South Redwood Road and the other one near South Temple and Redwood Road. Police say they believe all the people involved knew each other. At this point, there are no arrests and the investigation is ongoing. Now, in the wake of that shooting, Salt Lake City police say officers are working around the clock to address gun violence, but they need our help. Police Chief Mike Brown says there's been 30 robberies and 60 aggravated assaults involving a gun this year. He also says there's been 28 drive by shootings. Now, Chief Brown says more guns are ending up in the wrong people's hands recently, but he tells us even one tip can help get those guns off the street. 
In the last two years, more guns have been sold in this city and across the country than in recent history. More guns sold, more guns stolen in burglaries, in car prowls, more guns in the hands of people that shouldn't have them. Now he's hoping the city's new gun buyback program will help lower the number of shootings we have here. The first event will be held this Saturday at the Salt Lake City Public Safety Building. We're told the first 200 people to turn in their guns will receive up to $100. The Utah County Sheriff's Office is starting its teacher academy tonight. The program prepares school staff for what to do in an active shooter situation. The Sheriff's Office says it has around 40 school staff members participating in the Six Course Academy. These staff members uh, range from teachers, janitors, and school counselors. The deputy shooting blanks allows teachers to recognize what a shooting sounds like and how they should react. Uh, hopefully give them an opportunity to be able to react earlier and react in a way that dramatically increases the likelihood of a positive outcome for them and for their kids. Sergeant Spencer Cannon, who you just heard from, says the class hopes to give teachers a better sense for what feelings they could have during an active shooter situation so that the instructor can help guide them through those initial emotions. Now, Salt Lake City Police arrest a man they say crashed a stolen car and injured a child. Officers say they saw a man and a woman walk up to a stolen car yesterday and get inside it. They tried to block the car, but the car took off, crashing into another car at an intersection. Now you see the aftermath of the crash right there. Crews took a nine-year-old boy in that car to the hospital. The two suspects are both in police custody. And in Sandy, there's a new initiative to fight an alarming surge in car and home burglaries. The police department is helping start a neighborhood watch group. Now yesterday, community members met with officers to discuss how it'll all work. We're told the police department will have extra patrols in your neighborhood while you're away and neighbors will keep an eye out for anything suspicious. A great thing to have, especially as the weather heats up. Yep. It's summer, people want to get away. It's a great thing to have. But in terms of our weather, Thomas, I mean, it's really going to get hot mm -hmm. out there these next few days. Yeah, I mean, it's already been hot down in southern Utah, but that heat is going to extend into northern Utah as we make our way into the second half this week. This is the view from Monument Valley down in southern Utah. An absolutely beautiful start to the morning here. We've had some beautiful sunrises, and then as we look in the opposite direction of the sunrise, Utah State University, Old Main, got that green, and look at the diagonal pattern there on the grass at Old Main. That is just very pretty. So Utah State University looking great, and it's looking great across the state as temperatures are very much on the comfortable side of things, and it's quite warm down in St. George and Lake Powell, with temperatures in the middle 70s. But it's 59 degrees right now in Salt Lake City, 43 degrees in Logan, 58 degrees in Blanding, and after this I would say mild start. We're going to see that daytime high climb to 90 degrees in Salt Lake City and 102 in St. George. So something I want to point out is like you, you, is you want to keep in mind the fire risk down in southern Utah, but also the temperature in the car as well. As we get to 90 degrees this afternoon, the elapsed time, 10 minutes in the car, the temperature will already be 109. So always make sure that you're double checking, especially as we continue to heat things up. And by the end of the week, we could be talking about temperatures in the mid to upper 90s along the Wasatch Front. Now, as we check our traffic out there this morning, we do have that lane, the two lanes closed at 21st and 7th Street in Salt Lake City. So if you're going to be traveling in that area, you need to make sure that you take an alternate route, a serious accident there earlier this morning. Meanwhile, we have an accident I-215 and we also have an accident on I-15 in Pleasant Grove, but neither one of those are causing too much of a slowdown on the interstate. And from Salt Lake City to Tuella, we're on time at 31 to 33 minutes. Safe travels. All right, thank you, Thomas. During the Utah's wildfire season, a new fire is burning in Juab County this morning. Firefighters say the so-called Dutson fire sparked along I-15 yesterday near the city of Mona. Crews say a car dragging chain started this fire. Fortunately, they were able to get a handle on it fairly quickly. But they are reminding drivers to secure their chains before taking off. I last checked the fire's 29 acres, and firefighters are hoping to have it fully contained by today. Firefighters say cars are one of the top causes for wildfires in Utah. Utah Forestry Fire and State Land says uh, just uh, last year, nearly 200 of the human caused fires were started by a car. Fire officials say driving over tall grass, dragging, change, dragging chains, that is, worn out brake pads, and faulty catalytic converters are all common causes of wildfires in Utah. The Parley's Canyon fire last summer was caused by a driver dragging their catalytic converter along the road on I 80. 
it's you know 600 degrees and it goes into grass and the fuel moisture in the grass is low enough that it's combustible at 500 degrees, then that spark will start that fire. Fire officials say one of the best things you can do to prevent wildfires is keep up on your car's regular maintenance needs. All right, and joining me live in the studio now to talk about how to be prepared for wildfires is American Red Cross Executive Director of the Northern Utah and Western Wyoming Chapter, Michael Smalden. Michael, first of all, thanks for being with us here today. Thanks for having me. Wildfire season, you know, is pretty much just kicked off today. For homeowners, um, you know, I just mentioned the Parley's Canyon fire. First thing to keep in mind, uh, you're told there's a wildfire. What do homeowners need to do? Yeah, they need to be prepared um, and get ready to evacuate. So having a go kit that has important information, um, prescriptions, um, important documents, um, anything you think that's going, you're going to need to um, continue on with your mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. uh, make sure you have that in your go bag. And uh, talk about the things in the go bag, because I mean, you don't have a lot of time sometimes, you know, what are the main essentials? I know you said ID, um, what other things could you include in there? Yeah, ID, prescriptions um, for yourself, for your family, and for your pets. Um, any yeah. important documents like ID, um, anything like that. And then make sure you just have a change of clothes, um, anything like that, toiletry items, um, just so you can, you're not gonna be around your home. So just something that you can use to take care of yourself. In these instances, do firefighters tell um, the homeowners how long they'll be out of their house? I mean, a go bag, is that enough to last a week, two weeks? Yeah, we always say prepare for 72 hours. Um, but, you know, depending on how big the fire is, it could be longer than that. Um, so just make sure that you, um, depending on where you live, if you live in a wildland, urban, interplex, so something on the, um, if you're in a home near the mountains, um, or if you're more into the city area, um, but there's a lot of brush and a lot of things around you, just make sure that you are looking around um, and making sure you're prepared for how long that fire could take. And anything to do uh, to help firefighters, because obviously they want to get in there and do what they can to, to mitigate this wildfire or whatever the fire may be. What can people do to help out firefighters? Yeah, this is a good time for you to start clearing out leaves and brush and trees, um, anything dry that is around your home. Um, between five to 30 feet, um, you want to create that that buffer zone um, around your home to make sure that uh, firefighters have that, what we, they call defensive space um, around your home to uh, give your home a chance and firefighters a chance to be able to, um, if they need to, you know, to work to save your home. And, uh, you know, you're with Red Cross. What's your role come, I mean, this season? Do you guys prepare for this? Um, and what do those conversations look like uh, between the Red Cross team? Yeah, so our volunteers are training. Um, they're working and we, we are preparing, you know, to hold uh, open shelters. So if people do have to evacuate, um, there's a safe place for you to go. And, uh, you know, we work with uh, close with our fire departments um, as they are doing their evacuations to make sure that we can um, have our teams ready to go. And obviously, Utah, everyone's, you know, probably got pets, too. What to keep in mind with the four legged friends? Yeah, just make sure that you have food, treats, medication, um, anything that is just like for your human family, um, your pet family. Um, you just need to make sure that you have uh, the necessities for your pet um, with you. Okay, well, thank you very much, Michael. Again, Michael Smalden uh, with the Red Cross. Jillian, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Jordan. Time now is 640. Coming up on GMU, writing gay marriage into law. Why a state senator says it's time to put marriage equality on the books here in Utah. Coming up, but first, here's your first look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Get out of here, go. In this morning's GMA First Look, cracking down on catalytic converter thefts. We've seen where they quickly, like NASCAR, they get the jacks, jack them up, cut them off, and get these items. 300 bucks a piece, it's a lucrative night. In California, the LAPD hosting a VIN etching event at a local shopping mall. Residents lining up to have their car's VIN number permanently marked on that targeted car park. Anything that we can do to try to prevent it would be great. Lawmakers are also taking action. According to the National Insurance Crime Bureau, 36 states have proposed bills, 18 of which have enacted laws banning auto recyclers from accepting converters not attached to a vehicle. And coming up at 7 a.m., we're going to have the expert tips to keep your car protected. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, Phoenix, Arizona.
Time now for your weather on the fours. All right, it's 644. The uh, time now for your weather on the fours with meteorologist Thomas Skiboy. Thomas, what do you have for us today? Well, we got heat that's really beginning to build in southern Utah. No surprise yesterday it was hot. We got above 100 degrees in St. George. And from now, basically through this weekend in St. George, you can almost count on that temperature climbing to above 100 degrees each day. But that heat's also going to start to build in northern Utah as high pressure will be taking control of our weather really for the second half of this week. We get mostly dry pattern temperatures soaring. And then down in southern Utah, especially those fire concerns will be continuing as we'll be looking at warm and breezy conditions on the bigger picture with the satellite and radar all quiet across the state. We do have some cloud coverage off to our west that will likely find its way into the state as we see those clouds racing ahead of a cold front. But unfortunately, that cold front's not going to be able to make it to us as high pressure will be blocking anything that gets to us. So other than just a few extra clouds today, we'll be looking at dry conditions. And we'll be looking at toasty conditions as well. Here's the view though in Oak City, an absolutely beautiful sunrise underway down in central Utah. And we also have a pretty sunrise that's currently underway in northern Utah as well on the Wasatch Front, South Jordan. Looking quite nice out there. Do have some cloud coverage around, but nothing that's going to be getting in your way. We're sitting at 43 degrees in Logan, so that would be on the chilly side of things. But we'll be seeing temp that temperature warm up rather quickly. 59 degrees currently in Salt Lake City, but down in St. George, it's 75 degrees. So after a mild start to the morning across the board, we'll see those daytime highs get on the toasty side, even in northern Utah, with making a run at 90 degrees in Salt Lake City, 80 degrees in Park City. Partly cloudy to partly sunny skies up north, partly cloudy skies in the central half of the state, 90 degrees in Castledale, 93 degrees in Gunnison, and by the time you get down into southern Utah, mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies, a daytime high of 93 Lake Powell, 91 degrees in Escalante, and 102 down in St. George. And again, all of this being driven by high pressure and are watching your weather for you today. We'll show just maybe a few echoes of moisture, but I'm thinking we'll stay on the dry side just because we have a lot of dry air in place. And then for tomorrow into Friday with that high pressure firmly in control, mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies, and it's even more sunshine by Friday as those daytime highs will be at least 10 to 15 degrees above average in most locations, and it's only going to continue to warm up from there by Saturday. We could see that daytime high in the upper 90s in Salt Lake City, and for perspective, the record high in Salt Lake City on Saturday, 98 degrees. There's at least a very good chance that we tie it, but if we get to, we could get to around 99 to 100 degrees on Saturday, depending on how things shake out. So Saturday it is going to be hot, but a cold front should be arriving going into Sunday to help ease that temperature back down into the early half of next week. But down in St. George, that heat's only going to continue to increase in between Friday and Saturday. The daytime highs could be anywhere between 104 and 108 in lower Washington County. An excessive heat watch will be going into effect. So be mindful of the heat and also keep in mind the fire risk in southern Utah will be continuing, especially as we move into this upcoming weekend with the winds increasing as well ahead of the cold front. But in St. George, 102 today to 107 possible on Saturday. Then those daytime highs dial back into the middle 90s by Monday, but still definitely staying on the warm side. Then on the Wasatch front around 90 degrees today to the middle 90s by Friday, upper 90s possible on Saturday where we'll be flirting with those records and a slight chance for some wet weather Sunday into Monday as the cold front arrives and we'll see the daytime highs dial back into the upper 70s. So that should be some pretty good relief in northern Utah. As we check our traffic, 21st Street at 7th, and make sure that you're taking an alternate route in Salt Lake City if you're traveling in that area. But we have two accidents, one on I-15 and one on I-215. Neither one of those are causing much of a slowdown. And from Salt Lake City to Ogden, right on time at 30 minutes in both directions. Safe travels. In national news, survivors from the Texas school shooting will testify today before a House committee on gun violence. This includes an 11-year-old who played dead during the shooting just to stay alive. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. This morning, new video shows 11-year-old Mia Cerillo clutching a blanket as she takes her first plane ever to Washington. The Uvalde shooting survivor will face Congress and recount how she had to cover herself in her classmates' blood and play dead to survive. Victims' families and survivors of the Uvalde and Buffalo mass shootings are in Washington for multiple hearings to call on Congress to act on gun reform. My mother's life mattered. And your actions here today will tell us how much it matters to you. Teacher Arnolfo Reyes, who was I shot twice myself. by the gunman in Uvalde, says he cannot forgive law enforcement for taking more than an hour to stop the shooter who killed Absolutely. every student in his classroom. After everything, I get more angry because you have a bulletproof vest. I had nothing. 
A group of bipartisan senators are aiming to have a compromise on a narrow set of proposals ready by the end of the week. Senator McConnell hasn't said anything publicly about the age requirement for AR-15s and privately, sources say, has not pushed for any specific gun policies. M1, ABC News, Washington. Now, ABC News will bring you live coverage of the gun reform hearing on Capitol Hill starting at 8 o'clock this morning. We're going to carry it here on air in the streaming channel ABC News Live. Moving on to a warning to anyone ordering baby formula to their home. New video out of Colorado shows a UPS driver leaving a box of baby formula at someone's doorstep. Within 30 minutes, someone, you see them right there running out of their car, they go and snag that formula, which is worth $100. Police are now warning that porch pirates are targeting people who order baby formula right now because of the high demand. So be aware when and where you have those packages delivered. A Utah state senator wants to legalize gay marriage here in the Beehive State. Senator Derek Kitchen says the laws in the books only recognize marriage between a man and a woman. A federal judge struck that down in 2014. Now Kitchen is introducing a bill to officially make marriage equal. This comes after a leaked Supreme Court draft opinion suggested that the, uh, the court could overturn the federal right to an abortion, sparking fears that same-sex marriage could be next. The fact that reproductive health care is being possibly taken away from half of our population, we should all be worried about our other fundamental rights that have been obtained to the courts over the last decade or so. Senator Kitchen says legalizing same-sex marriage in Utah would ensure legal protections for all couples, regardless of Supreme Court decisions. Let's go back to that breaking news of a deadly crash in South Salt Lake. So Utah Highway Patrol tells us an adult man was hit by a driver that didn't see him. You're taking a live look at the scene near 21st South and 6 West. You can see those two lanes are blocked off as police investigate. UDOT says they're going to stay that way for another hour or so. So make sure you plan ahead for those morning commutes. Of course, we're going to bring you the latest information on this crash, both on air and online at ABC4.com. In Salt Lake City, there's a new mile long trail for you to hike or bike on. The first phase of the Folsom Trail officially opened yesterday. Now it runs from 10th West and Folsom Avenue to the North Temple Front Runner and Tracks Bridge. The city is repurposing an abandoned railroad by Union Pacific and then connecting the west side all the way to downtown. Our west side is boxed in by rail and freeway corridors. It is so important for us to figure out how we punch through these boundaries that have been put on our west side neighborhoods and businesses. The 10 year project costs three and a half million dollars. Some fathers like to bond with their sons over things like baseball, but this father son duo is spending their quality time 1000 feet in the air. Eight year old Sam Baker of Colorado he just finished a major climb in Zion National Park. Sam and his father Joe climbing the moonlight buttress, a 1,200-foot climb. Sam's obsession with the ex extreme sport comes from his parents, who fell in love climbing together. He is afraid of a few things. Why don't you show him the things you're afraid of? Spiders and sharks, but I'm glad there's no sharks up there. Sam says the best part about climbing is spending time with his dad. And they'll be back at it again in Yosemite at the end of the summer. Sam will be the first eight-year-old ever to attempt El Capitan, the biggest wall of its kind in the U.S. So amazing. What an impressive eight-year-old. Yeah. And the sweetest thing, I just want to spend time with my dad. Like, can you be any cuter? That's adorable. And, and he's right. He does not have to worry about sharks up there. <laughs> he does not. He's in the clear there. Well, I mean, can you imagine seeing, seeing a shark up there? No. <laughs> That'd be bad. <laughs> that would probably, probably ruin your day. I'm not in the right spot, right? Anyway, uh, hot temps today out pretty much everywhere in Utah, right? Oh, yeah. It's going to start to get toasty in northern Utah. It already is down in southern Utah, but we did have some pretty views down in southern Utah. This was captured by our very own Wesley Ruff at Sand Hollow Golf Course down mm -hmm. in southern Utah. That's really pretty just to see the lush green fairways clashing with the red rock there. Then Chris Williams last night in Lehigh captured this beautiful sunset. And we also had a beautiful sunset in Draper where Brian Williams captured this with those high clouds off in the distance. Absolutely beautiful. So some beautiful sunsets last night and a beautiful sunrise out there this morning with ABC4 News Studios. Our colonial flag got a steady southeasterly breeze and those southerly breezes continue to bring in those warmer temperatures, high pressure controlling our weather. 
is going to lead that heat continuing to build. And by Friday and Saturday, it's going to feel all a bit of summertime. By the time we get into Friday and Saturday, we could see mid to upper 90s in Salt Lake City, but St. George will be in the 100 degree range once again today. And then by Friday and Saturday, those daytime highs could be anywhere between 104 and 108. An excessive heat watch will be going into effect for lower Washington County. Not much relief at night as overnight lows will be in the mid to upper 70s. So St. George, it's definitely going to be feeling like summertime, but it kind of already does. Now, as we check our traffic out there this morning, we do have an accident at 21st and at 7th Street. For some reason, the graphic doesn't want to pull up. There we go. Make sure you take an alternate route. We got that deadly crash there. We continue to follow, but an accident, I-215 and I-15, one in Pleasant Grove and one just north of Salt Lake City. Neither one of those causing much of a slowdown, and our drive times are still looking good. Park City to Salt Lake City, 31 minutes in both directions. Safe travels. Okay, Thomas, thank you very much. Let's get to uh, baby birthday time. We want to wish a happy birthday to Troy Oliver Knutson the third. He's turning one year old today. Precious. He's so cute. Look at those big eyes. I love He's the photo. He's going to be a heartbreaker. <laughs> Look, he looks, He's cute, right? He looks at you like that with those eyes and you're not saying no. His family also <laughs> says he loves climbing uh, at the gym. Uh, and loves driving on the tractor with his dad. Happy birthday to Troy Oliver Knutson the third. Don't forget, we want to see all of your baby pictures. We want to celebrate the birthday of your kids, uh, your grandkids. Send us the baby picture. Of course, we'll share it on TV. Email the photo to news at abc4.com. Tell us a little bit about them. The more you tell us about them, the better, because we can obviously talk about it on air, uh, how old they are. Yep. Of course, anything else uh, you'd like to yeah. share. Very distinguished name, the third. I know, yeah, Fancy I love that. Schmancy. <laughs> yeah, it's a family name, and maybe his son will uh, be the fourth. Maybe, we'll see what happens. Well, for all of you out there who love cheese, I hope you don't love cheese as much as this. Velveeta <laughs> is launching a limited edition cheese scented nail polish. Okay. Nasty, um, if any of you guys plan on getting this, we're gonna have a problem. It smells like cheese. <laughs> what are you whispering about over there? I said there? I kind of like it. Of course you do. You Pinkies would be out. the one person that likes it. One Pinkies person. Out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have two colors, red and yellow. They also have these stickers on them, you guys, and they say things like drip and cheese on them. I so, love it. I mean, if you love cheese, I guess get it. But if you come up to me like this, oh, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> Thanks for making this part of your morning. We'll Some see your velvet nail news. polish later. <laughs> right back. Be gracious.
People are solving conflict through pulling the trigger and firing a weapon. Now on GMU at 7, tackling gun violence in Salt Lake City. Here what the police chief is asking people to do to keep that city safe, coming up. And a wildfire breaks out in Drub County. How it got started and how Utah drivers can prevent fires along our roads. And all of a sudden I just woke up in the hospital. An off-duty nurse saves a man's life. See how she managed to help a softball player going into cardiac arrest. And for the second half of this work week, high pressure will start to really bring the heat. And by this upcoming weekend, we could be talking about temperatures near or even above records. We'll break down the details of Good Morning Utah at 7 that starts right now. Live from Utah's CW30, Good Morning Utah at 7 starts now. Good morning, Utah. Thank you for waking up with us. I'm Jillian Smuckler. And I'm Jordan Burroughs in for Brian Carlson. It is 7 o'clock on this Wednesday morning. Thank you for joining us on Utah's CW30. This morning, we're following breaking news of a deadly crash in South Salt Lake. Utah Highway Patrol says a driver didn't see a man walking in the road and hit and killed him. So you're taking a live look at the scene right now near 21st South and 6th West. You can see that they have about two lanes blocked off right now as police work to clear that scene and figure out exactly what happened. But UDOT says they're going to keep those lanes shut down there for about another hour or so. Of course, the moment we learn more information on this, we will let you know. And we have an update on that deadly shooting. Uh, at a Salt Lake City apartment. Police now say they believe it started as an attempted robbery. It happened Monday night near 17th South and Redwood Road. Police say several people left the scene in separate cars. Police say they found those cars, one of them which was on 11th South and Redwood Road, the other near South Temple in Redwood Road. Police say they believe all the people involved knew each other. At this point, there are no arrests and the investigation is ongoing. Now, in the wake of that shooting, Salt Lake City police say officers are working around the clock to address gun violence, but they need our help. Police Chief Mike Brown says there's been 30 robberies and 60 aggravated assaults, all involving a gun this year. Now, he says there's been also 28 drive-by shootings. Chief Brown says more guns are ending up in the wrong people's hands recently, but he tells us even one tip can help get those guns off the street. In the last two years, more guns have been sold in this city and across the country than in recent history. More guns sold, more guns stolen in burglaries, in car prowls, more guns in the hands of people that shouldn't have them. He's hoping the city's new gun buyback program will help lower the number of shootings we have here. The first event will be held this Saturday at the Salt Lake City Public Safety Building. We're told the first 200 people to turn their guns in will receive up to $100. Happening now, Layton City Police are asking for help finding a missing man who may be in danger. You see him here. Police say 56-year-old Travis Hicks was last seen Monday morning. He was leaving uh, his house to go to a gas station. They found his phone on the side of the road. Police say he takes several medications daily, so they believe he may be in danger without them. If you have any information, contact Layton City Police. In turning to Utah's wildfire season, a new fire is burning in Juab County this morning. Firefighters say the so-called Dutson Fire sparked along I-15 yesterday near the city of Mona. Crews say a car dragging chains started this fire. Now, fortunately, those crews were able to get a handle on it fairly quickly, but they are reminding drivers this morning to secure your chains before taking off. At last check, the fire is 29 acres, and firefighters are hoping to have it fully contained by later today. Firefighters say cars are one of the top causes for wildfires in Utah. Utah Forestry Fire and State Lands says last year nearly 200 of the human-caused fires were started by a car. Fire officials say driving over tall grass, dragging chains, worn-out brake pads, and faulty catalytic converters are all common causes of wildfires in Utah. The Parley's Canyon fire last summer was caused by a driver dragging their catalytic converter along the road on I-80. If it's you know, 600 degrees and it goes into grass and the fuel moisture in the grass is low enough that it's combustible at 500 degrees, then that spark will start that fire. Fire officials say one of the best things you can do to prevent wildfires is keep up on your car's regular maintenance needs. 
All right, time now is 704. Let's check uh, in with your weather with meteorologist Thomas Skiboy. Thomas, any good news for our wildfire risk this week? Yeah, unfortunately not. High pressure taking control of our weather, and that's going to lead to a dry air mass above. We'll have sinking air towards the surface, clear, stable conditions. And we'll also be talking about building heat. And by this weekend, we could be talking about temperatures near or even above record. So the heat, it is upon us, and it's going to be feeling all bit of summertime. And it's going to be toasty down in southern Utah, where Cedar City will be around 90 degrees. But it's pretty sunrise in the meantime. Southern Utah University Camera Network doesn't really get much better than that down in southern Utah. Meanwhile, Utah State University up in Logan at look over overlooking Old Main. All quiet here. Got a little bit of a breeze out there. And even though it's on the cool and chilly side of things in Logan, we're going to warm things up nicely across Logan as well, as we'll see that temperature eventually climbing into the 80s. But right now we're sitting at 61 degrees in Salt Lake City, 55 in Cedar City, 59 degrees in Hanksville. Most spots this morning across the state waking up with temperatures in the 50s. But down at St. George and Lake Powell, we're in the middle 70s at 74 degrees. That's a warm start to the morning for sure. And this afternoon we'll see a daytime high of 90 degrees in Salt Lake City, 102 down in St. George. We got to we got above 100 degrees in St. George yesterday and from today, tomorrow into your Saturday, Sunday and possibly or into Sunday as well. Those daytime highs are likely going to be at or above the century mark with Friday and Saturday being the hottest days where we could see a daytime high get as high as 107 in St. George. Now, as we check our traffic out there this morning, 21st eastbound, two lanes closed at 7th and wet in Salt Lake City and South Salt Lake. If you're traveling in that area, make sure you're taking an alternate route as that was a serious accident earlier on. We have an accident I-15 northbound just north of, or just south of Pleasant Grove and an accident I-215 just north of Salt Lake City, but neither one of those are causing much of a slowdown. And for Park City to Salt Lake City, we're on time at 31 to 34 minutes. Safe travels. Well, President Biden signs a bill to rename the Provo Veterans Center in Orem after a Utah World War II hero. Utah Senator Mike Lee sponsored the bill to rename the center in honor of Colonel Gail S. Halverson, otherwise known as the Candy Bomber. Now, he died earlier this year and became a symbol of hope during the war. Halverson flew a plane dropping candy to German children in towns devastated by the war, earning him the Candy Bomber name. Several people in Murray, including an off-duty nurse, are being recognized for their life-saving work. This morning, we're getting a look at some incredible body cam footage of them doing just that. It happened when Darren Ewell went into cardiac arrest while playing on a baseball field. That's when Dania Topham, an off-duty nurse with Intermountain Healthcare, rushed the field to help. And in my head, I'm just thinking, okay, what do I need to do? What am I going to do? Topham started doing CPR immediately. Last night, city officials gave Dania, as well as several first responders for both the Murray Fire and Police Departments, life-saving awards. Time now is 7.07. .07. Coming up on GMU, trips to the gas station are packing a punch. Hear how record high gas prices are impacting Utah drivers and their travel plans. Coming up. Salt Lake B is going to be come from behind win. Plus, Alex Barcelo works out for the Jazz. We'll hear from them coming up in your morning sports report.
Time now for ABC4 News Sports with Dana Green. Los Angeles Angels manager Joe Madden was fired. We'll see what that means for some of the former Salt Lake Bees that are with the Angels. They're taking on Tacoma. And we start with the produce race. race. The uh, corn falls over. Shucks. Still wins the race. Bees were down 5 0 when they get it rolling. Keen Wong with the bases loaded. Doubles to center. Everyone scores. Gatewood, Sierra Harrison all come around. And then it's David McKinnon with a shot to left center. This thing almost gets out of here. It's a two run double off the top of the wall. We are all tied up. Then in the bottom of the fourth, two men on for Jack Mayfield. And he blasts this one out of the park. That's a three run shot. Bees lead it eight to five. The final nine to eight. Big come from behind win. Same two teams go at it tonight. Game four of the Eastern Conference Finals. The two time defending champion Tampa Bay Lightning start fast and finish strong. Nikita Kucherov makes it 2 0 in the second. And then in the third period, Steven Stamkos jams in the rebound. The final 4 1. So that series is now all tied up at two games apiece. The Jazz have received permission to interview several candidates for the head coaching job, including assistants Johnny Bryant. Charles Lee, Will Hardy, and Joe Missoula. The Jazz also plan to interview Terry Stotts and Alex Jensen. Jazz brought in six more players for workouts, including former Weber State star Kobe McEwen and BYU's Alex Barcella, who's hoping for a shot in the NBA. Having spent the last three years at BYU, getting a chance to work out for the Jazz was extra special for Alex Barcelo. It means the world to me just because I, I got a lot of people here that I love in Utah, and uh, it feels good to be back here near the mountains. So I don't know. I'm excited to, that they invited me in for a workout, and I'm, I'm excited to see what comes from it. Barcelo knows he's probably not going to get drafted, but with his ability to shoot from distance, he was a 46% three-point shooter at BYU, he could find his way onto an NBA roster. Realistically, I'm probably not a lottery, but <laughs> you, guys, you guys know that. But I, I'm going to have to work hard and, and earn everything that I get, and I know that, that. you know I've never been handed anything my entire life, so I think I'm in the perfect spot to, to show what I got. Marcelo is a born leader, and whether he goes to the G League, Europe, or even the NBA, he's never going to listen to the doubters. I will never let anybody tell me that I can't do something. So I'm, I'm going to go prove it, and if someone tells me that I can't, then I'm, I'm going to go out there and try to prove them wrong. This has been a busy time for Barcelo. He's getting married next month, so planning a wedding and working out for NBA teams has been a bit stressful. It definitely has taken an emotional toll on us, but I'm just happy that I have people like my fiance Zoe and my sisters and my mom that I can count on and lean on uh, to help me through this process. I'm so thankful for her and for people like that around me that can, can help just keep me motivated. Well, with Quinn Snyder resigning after eight years with the Jazz, we asked one of the longest tenured coaches in the entire state, Kyle Whittingham, who's a big Jazz fan, what his reaction was to Snyder's resignation. Sad. I, I don't know him real well, but I've, I've had a chance to interact a little bit with him. But what a heck of a coach. Uh, respect everything he's done here. And uh, we're going to miss him. There comes a time when you need a new voice and a new, a new leader. And... Uh, you know, obviously he felt that was time for him right now, and and uh, I'm getting kind of close to that in my career. Ooh, sounds like change may be coming for him too. Here's what's coming up in local sports tonight: the Salt Lake Bees take on the Tacoma Rainiers at 6:35 at Smith's Ballpark. Also tonight, Game Three of the NBA Finals: Golden State and Boston. That's a seven o'clock tip right here on ABC4. Then tomorrow it's an afternoon game: Bees and Rainiers will finish their series at 12:05. That's your morning sports report. Have a great day. All right, game three, NBA game in Boston. We know Boston. who Jillian likes. Boston. Boston. I don't dunks. like Boston. You get the donkeys? Get the donkeys. And your cockies? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, but if Boston people are watching the show. They're like, I have a Midwest accent, I guess, and you know. But you're like whispering. <laughs> I know, I'm whispering because I didn't want you to know I want the Celtics to win. You want the Celtics? Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want the Celtics to win. This will make things exciting. We'll see. We'll see who wins. Well, we'll probably be asleep during the game, though. Yeah. Uh, bees games, though. Obviously, people here going yeah. on the weather. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We'll get partly cloudy skies. Temperatures will be on the toasty side at first pitch, but as we get through the evening, we'll be looking good. But with high pressure in control of our weather, if you like summertime, the next few days, the next several days are for you. As we get a dry pattern, temperatures will be soaring in northern Utah. They're already there in southern Utah, and it's only going to continue to get warmer over the next couple of days. And down in southern Utah, that fire risk that does continue. 
So something to keep in mind there. We have high pressure that's controlling our weather. We got a few clouds coming in from our west. So for today in northern and central Utah, we'll get partly cloudy to partly sunny skies. In, in southern Utah, though, we'll be looking on the mostly sunny side of things. But even though we'll see some extra clouds move in, the chance for any wet weather stays next to zero. Here's the view from Utah Lake. A beautiful start to the morning in the Utah Valley as you get a nice calm conditions here at the Linden Marina here. Not much going on, a few clouds off in the distance, but that's beautiful. And then at Arches National Park, it looks like you got an RV getting into the park right now, but a pretty sunrise underway here. And if you're going down to our national parks here the next couple of days, be very mindful of the heat and also of the fire risk. But I'm just going to continue to be a broken record on that as we continue to move into the summertime. Daytime highs on the toasty side in Salt Lake City, 90 degrees, while Park City will be making a run at 80 degrees. Again, partly cloudy to partly sunny skies in the northern half of the state, 82 degrees in Manila, 90 degrees in Dugway. Then at central Utah, we'll see a daytime high of 87 degrees in Emory, 96 in Green River, 83 degrees in East Carbon, and 91 degrees in Fillmore. Then in southern Utah, 97 in Hanksville, 94 in Milford, 90 in Parowan and Enterprise as well, while St. George climbs to 102. So it's going to be a hot day with partly cloudy heat to partly sunny skies in the north. But even though you can see a few echoes of moisture here, we're really not going to be looking at any chance of wet weather in the next couple of days thanks to that high pressure. But with it really being squarely on top of us on Friday, that temperature continues to crank up even more. And Saturday will have the potential to be near or even above record territory in Salt Lake City. On in Salt Lake City on Saturday, the record 98. That's what we're going with for a daytime high. So depending on how the next couple of days shake out, we'll continue to keep a close eye on that. But a cold front coming in on Sunday should see the temperature start to ease and then getting some relief early next week. But down in St. George, I mentioned that heat's going to continue to increase and there's going to be an excessive heat watch that goes into effect Friday afternoon that will last through Saturday evening because Friday and Saturday will bring the potential of daytime highs between 104 and 108. That's dangerously hot, not much relief in the overnights as overnight lows will only be dropping into the mid and upper 70s. So be mindful of the heat down in southern Utah that's about to be on your way, even though it's already there and cannot stress enough. Be mindful of the fire risk in southern Utah as well. Now, as we look at our seven day forecast in St. George, we'll be seeing those temperatures go from 102 today, climbing into the triple digits to around 105 by the time we get into your Friday, 107 on Saturday. And with the cold front coming in, we should be back in the 90s Monday into Tuesday and along the Wasatch front, low 90s for today, and then mid to upper 90s Friday into Saturday. Slight chance for wet weather Sunday into Monday with the cold front, and then those daytime highs should be in the upper 70s. Monday into Tuesday. As we check our traffic out there this morning, we're still looking at that serious crash. 21st eastbound, two lanes closed at 7th West, and we have a couple of accidents on the interstates. Two of those in Utah County, one of those near the Utah or the Salt Lake and Davis County line, not causing much of a slowdown. And from Provo to Salt Lake City, 37 minutes in both directions on time. If you want to take your weather with you on the go today, just make sure you download the Pinpoint Weather app. All you have to do is go to the Apple App Store, Google Play, or scan the QR code right there on your screen. All right, thank you, Thomas. This week, Apple is holding its Worldwide Developers Conference. So that's where several big announcements are made, including the ability to edit and unsend iMessages. Reporter Rich Jamiro explains in today's TechSmart. After two years on Zoom, I was back on a plane, headed to Apple Park in Cupertino. Sure, the ride share from the airport was overpriced, but that didn't matter right now. Let's start the show. This was the first time thousands of developers, journalists, and Apple employees were back in person for WWDC. There's nothing like actually getting to handle the products in person. There's nothing like seeing the executives and asking them questions in person. It's the company's annual get together for the folks who actually code the apps we use. It felt like a different Apple event for sure. Going up to the third floor here on the Apple campus. Also a rare opportunity to check out Apple's sprawling headquarters. You come here and you're like amazed and even capturing footage just doesn't do it justice. It's just beautiful. An engineering marvel of glass and curves embracing nature. The glass here it's so clear that you literally don't know where it's right there. You don't even know where it is, barely. Sure, there were announcements like the ability to edit and unsend messages, split Apple Pay purchases into four payments with no interest, and easily share your iCloud library with a family member. But no talk of virtual reality, which many expect to be Apple's next big thing. But I was expecting to see maybe a little more emphasis in the kind of experiences that we might have eventually with AR slash VR. There was hardware. The new MacBook Air is thinner, it's lighter, it's faster, it has a new M2 chip inside. Looks pretty good too. 
seeing that new MacBook Air as well, especially in the midnight color. I gotta say that definitely caught my eye. In the end, it's Apple, and even the tiniest changes affect millions in a big way. So you're seeing the hints of the big thing that we're all waiting for. In the meantime, just relentless iteration and refinement of the products people love. In Cupertino, I'm Rich Demuro, and you are Tech Smart. All right, are you team iPhone or team Android? iPhone. Okay, yeah, me too. What do you think about the text messages? I am pumped about it. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I wish I could have unsent a message or edited a message. Do you have any good examples? Uh, some that, that will friendly. definitely embarrass me. <laughs> Just, you know, when you're angry, maybe you say something you sure. regret the next day. Maybe you send the message to the wrong person. But then you still sent it, and then there could be a screenshot of it, and then you look even more guilty because you try to delete it. That's true, but with my hours, this is my whole thinking. I sleep at weird times because of this shift. Okay. I'm thinking if I'm sending messages at the time I'm awake that most people aren't, I can oh, unsend it really it. fast. Oh, that's kind of a good point. That's just my thought. Yeah, we'll but see. So it comes out with the next update. Yeah, we'll see okay. what happens. All right, 720, <laughs> still ahead on uh, GMU. A terrifying attack caught on camera. Hear what happened to this woman. She was thrown onto the train tracks in New York City. And as we head to the break, we leave you with a live look at Alta. Good morning, Utah. We'll be right back. In national news, a new video captures the terrifying moment a man pushes a woman onto the subway tracks in New York City. And we do want to warn you, the video may be disturbing. 30-year-old Theodore Ellis, seen in this video here, bear hugging a woman before throwing her onto the tracks. Watch that again. Just terrifying to see. Now, fortunately, witnesses helped her get back onto the platform before the next train rolled in, but she does have a broken collarbone and a lot of cuts and bruises on her head. Police say the attack was unprovoked and the two don't know each other. This morning, Ellis is facing assault and reckless endangerment charges. In consumer news, the cost of gas across the country continues to soar, setting new record high prices at the pump across the country and even here in Utah. According to AAA, the average price for a gallon of gas in Utah is nearly $5. It sits at $4.99, a new all-time record. As crude oil prices continue to rise, gas prices are expected to follow, especially as summer travel heightens demand. One driver tells us high gas prices are changing her typical vacation plans. Usually what we do is road trips, and so that is really kind of curtailing a lot of our plans that we're hoping to have. So we were going to go down and see some of the national parks. That may not happen this year. Utah now one of uh, 15 states with the highest gas prices around the country, according to AAA. Experts say we won't be seeing relief anytime soon, but they have a few suggestions to save money uh, for you at the pump, like using UTA and use rideshare when possible, and also making sure to keep up with your car maintenance. And good morning, Utah 724 here on this Wednesday morning. Our Dixie Tech camera down in St. George. 
all nice and quiet here, but it's a warm start to the morning in St. George. It's going to be hot by this afternoon and in Salt Lake City. We're sitting at 61 degrees right now. We'll get partly cloudy to partly sunny skies this afternoon, and the best time to take your dog for a walk will likely be during the first half of the day. As we get through the afternoon, that daytime high will be approaching 90 degrees. We'll be approaching 80 degrees in Park City this afternoon. Meanwhile, Moab, Lake Powell, and Kanab will be in the mid to upper 90s, getting close to 100 degrees in Lake Powell, but it's only going to get hotter. As we go into our Friday and Saturdays, high pressure will be firmly in control of our weather. And by Saturday, we could be talking about record temperatures in the Beehive State, where St. George could reach around 107 on Saturday, which, a, a, which an excessive heat watch will be going into effect between Friday and Saturday. So that heat in St. George, no joke over the next several days, so something to be mindful of there. As we check our traffic out there this morning, we have a few accidents on I-15. Two of those in Utah County, one of those on I-215 near the Salt Lake and Davis County line, but there's also a serious accident that we're following 21st eastbound two lanes close at 7th West. So make sure that you're building in plenty of time and take an alternate route if you normally travel in that direction. From Salt Lake City to Ogden, 30 to 31 minutes. Safe travels. Time now is 725 next on GMU writing gay marriage into law. Why a state senator says it's time to put marriage equality on the books in Utah coming up. Plus the biggest budget proposal in St. George history. Here what leaders are planning to do with over half a billion dollars. That's coming up next. You're watching Good Morning Utah. Good morning, Utah. It's 726. I'm Jordan Burroughs. This morning we are following breaking news of a deadly crash in South Salt Lake. Here's a live look or this is a look at the scene earlier this morning. Utah Highway Patrol says a driver didn't see a man walking in the road and hit and killed him. Here's a look at the scene near 21st uh, South and 6th West. Two lanes are still blocked off as police investigate. UDOT says it'll stay that way for at least another hour. Of course, we'll keep you updated once we learn more. And in an update this morning, Salt Lake City Police now believe Monday night's deadly shooting started as an attempted robbery. It happened Monday night near 17th South and Redwood Road. Police say they believe all the people involved knew each other. At this point, there are no arrests and the investigation is ongoing. All right, let's get a check with your weather and traffic. 100 degree plus days in St. Mm. Uh, George, Southern Utah, 90s, even close to 100 here in Salt Lake City and in the Valley. Yeah, so today it's going to be a toasty day across the state, and that heat's only going to continue to build high pressure and control of our weather. Not much happening across the state. Our skies will be staying dry. We'll see more cloud coverage by this afternoon, though, especially in central and northern Utah. But down in St. George, all quiet with our Dixie Tech camera and along the Wasatch Front, we're at 61 degrees right now. We'll be in the middle 80s by 1 o'clock, so the best time to take your dog for a walk today along the Wasatch Front, likely in the morning and in the evening. But in Park City, we'll be knocking on the door of 80 degrees today. But look at Friday. We could be in the middle 80s in Park City, while we'll likely be above 100 in Lake Powell and Moab, while Kanab will be in the mid to upper 90s in the next few days. And Saturday has the potential to be even hotter across the state. Now, as we check our traffic, we're still following that deadly accident at 21st and 7th Street, so make sure you're taking an alternate route there. But also a vehicle fire at exit 275 Pleasant Grove Boulevard. So if you're traveling in that area, build in some extra time. Be a little be be cautious traveling through there, but from Salt Lake City to Ogden, we're on time at 30 to 31 minutes. Safe travels.
You're watching Good Morning Utah with Brian Carlson, Jillian Smuckler, and Thomas Keyboy. Welcome back. I'm Jordan Burroughs in for Brian Carlson. And I'm Jillian Smuckler. It's 729 on this Wednesday. Thank you for sticking with us on Utah CW30. This morning, we're following breaking news of a deadly crash in South Salt Lake. So you're taking a live look at the scene near 21st South and 6 West. Utah Highway Patrol says a driver didn't see a man walking in the road and hit and killed him. You can see they have two lanes blocked off as police investigate. UDOT says the la those lanes are going to stay closed for another hour or so, so plan your morning commute accordingly. And of course, the moment we learn more information about that crash, we will let you know. We now have an update on that deadly shooting at a Salt Lake City apartment. Police now say they believe it started as an attempted robbery. It happened Monday night near 17th South and Redwood Road. Police say several people left the scene in separate cars. They found one of the cars on 11th South and Redwood Road and the other car near South Temple and Redwood Road. Police said they believe all the people involved knew each other. At this point, there are no arrests and the investigation is ongoing. In the wake of that shooting, Salt Lake City Police say officers are working around the clock to address gun violence, but they need our help. Police Chief Mike Brown says there's been 30 robberies and 60 aggravated assaults involving a gun this year. He also says there's been 28 drive-by shootings. Chief Brown says more guns are ending up in the wrong people's hands recently, but he tells us even one tip can help get those guns off the street. In the last two years, more guns have been sold in this city and across the country than in recent history. More guns sold, more guns stolen in burglaries, in car prowls, more guns in the hands of people that shouldn't have them. Now he's hoping the city's new gun buyback program will help lower the number of shootings we have. The first event will be held this Saturday at the Salt Lake City Public Safety Building. We're told the first 200 people to turn in their guns will receive up to $100. The Utah County Sheriff's Office is starting its Teachers Academy tonight. The program prepares school staff for what to do in an active shooter situation. The Sheriff's Office says it has around 40 school staff members participating in this six course academy. The staff members are teachers, janitors and school counselors, among others. The deputy shooting blanks allows teachers to recognize what a shooting sounds like and how they should react. Uh, hopefully give them an opportunity to be able to react earlier and react in a way that dramatically increases the likelihood of a positive outcome for them and for their kids. You just heard from Sergeant Spencer Cannon, who says the class hopes to give teachers a better sense for what feelings they could have during an active shooter situation so that the instructor can help guide them through those initial emotions. A Utah state senator wants to legalize gay marriage. Senator Derek Kitchen is introducing a bill to make same sex marriage legal here in Utah. This comes after a leaked Supreme Court draft opinion suggested the court could overturn the federal right to an abortion. That's now sparking fears that same sex marriage could be next. The fact that reproductive health care is being possibly taken away from half of our population, we should all be worried about our other fundamental rights that have been obtained to the courts over the last decade or so. Senator Kitchen says legalizing the right to same-sex marriage in Utah would ensure protections for all couples regardless of Supreme Court rulings. In Southern Utah, the St. George City Council is considering the largest budget proposal in city history. The $503 million budget would be nearly 80 million more than last year. That increase is in an effort to address the city's rapid growth. City leaders say nearly 40% of the funds would go towards utilities and about 20 would go toward public safety. About $68 million of the budget is just for water and sewer infrastructure. So everybody's aware that water is a big deal in St. George right now. We need to be really proactive when it comes to uh, protecting our water resources. The increased budget would be supported by raising property taxes. There's a public hearing to adopt the final budget on June 16th. And good morning, Utah. Time is currently 734 here on this Wednesday morning. High pressure will be the name of the game here moving forward over the next several days. And that's going to really result in some high temperatures moving forward where it is going to be quite hot with dry conditions being also sticking around for us. So that heat 
It's going to start to build in northern Utah today, but it's already there down in southern Utah. It's only going to be getting hotter with Friday and Saturday likely being the hottest days. Here's the view from ABC 4 News Studios with our colonial flag. We've seen a little bit more cloud coverage filter in, but still a very pretty and calm start to the morning here. And then down in Cedar City, not a cloud in the sky. Southern Utah University looking absolutely beautiful on this Wednesday morning. We're halfway to the weekend at this point. 61 degrees currently in Salt Lake City, 74 in St. George, 74 in Lake Powell. Most spots starting off in the 50s and 60s, but we do have a few spots in the 40s, so maybe a sweater there, but by this afternoon, you won't need it. 90 degrees for a daytime high in Salt Lake City, partly cloudy to partly sunny, and 102 in St. George. And as I mentioned, we're only going to be getting hotter over the next few days. So if you like summer temperatures, they're here, but down in southern Utah, be mindful of the heat and also be mindful of the fire risk. Now, as we check our traffic out there this morning, for some reason, the graphics have gone away, but we are still looking at that accident 21st and 7th, and that's going to be in South Salt Lake with that fatal accident. So take an alternate route of traveling in that area. We've had a couple of accidents on I-215 and on I-15. Two of those in Utah County, but neither one of those have caused much of a slowdown. But with the vehicle fire just south of Pleasant Grove, just be careful traversing that area. Drive times from Salt Lake City to Tuella, 33 minutes in both directions. Safe travels. A new fire is burning in Juab County this morning. Firefighters say the so-called Dutson fire sparked along I-15 yesterday near the city of Mona. Crews say a car dragging chain started this fire. Fortunately, they were able to get a handle on it fairly quickly. But they are reminding drivers to secure their chains before taking off. At last check, the fire's 29 acres and firefighters are hoping to have it fully contained by today. Firefighters say cars are one of the top causes for wildfires in Utah. Utah Forestry Fire and State Land says uh, just uh, last year, nearly 200 of the human caused fires were started by a car. Fire officials say driving over tall grass, dragging chains, dragging chains that is, worn out brake pads, and faulty catalytic converters are all common causes of wildfires in Utah. The Parley's Canyon fire last summer was caused by a driver dragging their catalytic converter along the road on I-80. If it's, you know, 600 degrees and it goes into grass and the fuel moisture in the grass is low enough that it's combustible at 500 degrees, then that spark will start that fire. Fire officials say one of the best things you can do to prevent wildfires is keep up on your car's regular maintenance needs. All right, and joining me live in the studio now to talk about how to be prepared for wildfires is American Red Cross Executive Director of the Northern Utah and Western Wyoming Chapter, Michael Smaldon. Michael, first of all, thanks for being with us here today. Thanks for having me. Wildfire season, you know, is pretty much just kicked off today. For homeowners, um, you know, I just mentioned the Parley's Canyon fire. First thing to keep in mind, uh, you're told there's a wildfire. What do homeowners need to do? Yeah, they need to be prepared um, and get ready to evacuate. So having a go kit that has important information, um, prescriptions, um, important documents, um, anything you think that's going, you're going to need to um, continue on with your mm -hmm. life, um, make sure you have that in your go bag. And uh, talk about the things in the go bag, because, I mean, you don't have a lot of time sometimes. You know, what are the main essentials? I know you said ID. Um, what other things could you include in there? Yeah, ID, prescriptions um, for yourself, for your family, and for your pets. Um, any yeah. important documents like ID, um, anything like that. And then make sure you just have a change of clothes, um, anything like that, toiletry items, um, just so you can, you're, you're not going to be around your home. So just something that you can use to take care of yourself. In these instances, do firefighters tell um, the homeowners how long they'll be out of their house? I mean, a go bag, is that enough to last a week, two weeks? Yeah, we always say prepare for 72 hours. Um, but, you know, depending on how big the fire is, it could be longer than that. Um, so just make sure that you, um, depending on where you live, if you live in a wildland, urban, interplex, so something on the, um, if you're in a home near the mountains, um, or if you're more into the city area, um, but there's a lot of brush and a lot of things around you, just make sure that you are looking around um, and making sure you're prepared for how long that fire could take. And anything to do uh, to help firefighters, because obviously they want to get in there and do what they can to, to mitigate this wildfire or whatever the fire may be, what can people do to help out firefighters? Yeah, this is a good time for you to start clearing out leaves and brush and trees, um, anything dry that is around your home, um, between five to 30 feet. Um, you want to create that, that buffer zone um, around your home to make sure that uh, firefighters have that, what we, they call defensive space um, around your home to, uh, give your home a chance and firefighters a chance to be able to, um, if they need to, you know, to work to save your home. 
and uh, you know you're with Red Cross. What's your role come? I mean, this season, do you guys prepare for this? Um, and what do those conversations look like uh, between the Red Cross team? Yeah, so our volunteers are training, um, they're working, and we we are preparing, you know, to hold uh, open shelters. So if people do have to evacuate, um, there's a safe place for you to go. And, uh, you know, we work with uh, close with our fire departments um, as they are doing their evacuations to make sure that we can um, have our teams ready to go. And obviously Utah, everyone's, you know, probably got pets too. What to keep in mind with the four-legged friends? Yeah, just make sure that you have food, treats, medication, um, anything that is just like for your human family, um, your pet family, um, you just need, need to make sure that you have uh, the necessities for your pet um, with you. Okay, well, thank you very much, Michael. Again, Michael Smalden uh, with the Red Cross. Time now is 740. Coming up on GMU, the ultimate King James memorabilia heads to the auction block. Find out how much you'll have to pay for this one-of-a-kind LeBron James trading card coming up. And don't forget, staying informed has never been easier. ABC4 News is there for you. To get your news straight to your phone, just download that ABC4 News app. All you have to do is scan that QR code right there on your screen. We're back after this. Welcome back. President Biden signs a bill to rename the Provo Veterans Center in Orem after a Utah World War II hero. Utah Senator Mike Lee sponsored the bill to rename the center in honor of Colonel Gail S. Halverson. Now, he died earlier this year and became a symbol of hope during the war. Halverson flew a plane dropping candy to German children in towns devastated by the war, earning him the Candy Bomber name. Some of Utah's cities are topping a nationwide list for fastest growing communities. The U.S. Census Bureau shows St. George, Provo, Orem, and Logan, and the top 10 for cities seeing the largest population growth in 2021. St. George is in first place with a 5.1% growth between July of 2020 to July of last year. Utah County is in the country's 10th fastest growing county, adding nearly uh, 22,000 people. In Salt Lake City, there's a new mile-long trail for you to hike or bike on this morning. The first phase of the Folsom Trail officially opened yesterday. Now it runs from 10th West in Folsom Avenue to the North Temple Front Runner in Traxbridge. The city is repurposing an abandoned railroad by Union Pacific and connecting the west side to downtown. Our west side is boxed in by rail and freeway corridors. It is so important for us to figure out how we punch through these boundaries that have been put on our west side neighborhoods and businesses. The 10 year project costs three and a half million dollars. 
Time now for you. Time now for your weather on the fours. And good morning. You <laughs> there you go. I was like, Thomas is Thomas We're here. Coming? We're here. I promise I'm here. Okay, we got to measure the time, 744. That's why it's weather on the force. Anyway, Thomas, yep. uh, how's the weather shaping up today? So the weather today is going to be on the dry side, partly cloudy to partly sunny up north, mostly sunny down south. And with high pressure taking control of our weather, we're going to be looking at a dry pattern moving forward. Temperatures will really start to crank up starting today, but it's really going to crank up going into the beginning of this weekend. And the fire concerns down in southern Utah, those will be continuing as well. So look at the bigger picture on the satellite and radar. You can see a few clouds coming in from our west, but not going to see any wet weather from these clouds as the main con influence with our weather will be that area of high pressure that'll be sticking around. Here's the view from Flaming Gorge. Absolutely beautiful as we're starting off here on this early Wednesday morning. By the way, halfway to the weekend and down in southeastern Utah and Blanding, all quiet here, not a cloud in the sky. So this morning we have some pretty sunrises and it's pretty comfortable outside when it comes to our temperatures. But it's going to be getting warm rather quickly. We'll see a daytime high of 83 degrees in Logan, 80 degrees in Park City, 93, 90 degrees in Salt Lake City, 86 degrees in Duchesne. And as I mentioned, partly cloudy to partly sunny up north. And we'll see partly cloudy skies in the central and southern half of the state, 86 in Nephi, 91 degrees in Oak City, 91 in Richfield. Then in southern Utah, 93 in Lake Powell, 90 degrees in Blanding and St. George, 102. That's going to be hot for sure. And with high pressure sticking around, we're not going to see much change with our weather. So we'll play this forward 24 hours at a time. So stopping this this evening, partly cloudy to partly sunny up north, mostly sunny down south, a bit breezy, and we're going to continue to see these same conditions over the next couple of days. But that temperature will be increasing just a little bit each day with mostly sunny skies for our Thursday, for our Friday, and into our Saturday as well. And I think on Saturday, that is going to be the hottest day across the state because as we get from Saturday into Sunday, a cold front will finally start to approach. This could bring us a chance for some wet weather in the northern two-thirds of the state, but then some relief from these temperatures going into the beginning of next week and talking about these temperatures. I mean, we're going to be around 90 degrees today in Salt Lake City. We could be in the middle 90s by Friday and challenging records by Saturday. The record high on Saturday, 98, and that's what we're going with for a daytime high before those temperatures start to ease back down going into Sunday. But down in St. George, a daytime high of 102 today, but by the time we get into your Friday and Saturday, daytime highs are likely going to range between 104 and 108. There's an excessive heat watch that will be going into effect Friday afternoon, lasting through Saturday evening because the overnight low on Friday night only going to be dropping to around 74 to 77 degrees. Not much relief. Be mindful of the heat down in southern Utah the next several days. And also bear in mind the fire risk that does continue down in southern Utah as well. Now, as we check our Four, seven day forecast in St. George will go from 102 today to 105 Friday, 107 on Saturday. But with that cold front arriving, we'll start to see temperatures begin to ease down for the early stretch of next week. And along the Wasatch Front, near 90 degrees today, middle 90s Friday, upper 90s possible on Saturday. Then a chance for some wet weather Sunday into Monday as the daytime highs go from the 90s on Sunday down into the 70s possibly by Monday into Tuesday. Now, as we check our traffic out there this morning, we're continuing to follow the fatal accident 21st at 6th Street. But a few accidents on I-15 have caused just a couple of minor slowdowns, but not much that's going to be getting in your way too bad. Park City to Salt Lake City, 31 to 32 minutes. Safe travels. Okay, thank you, Thomas. And consumer news, the cost of gas across the country continues to soar, setting new record high prices at the pump here in Utah. According to AAA, the average price for a gallon of gas in the state is Nearly four is nearly five dollars. Uh, it's at four dollars and ninety nine cents, a new all time record. As crude oil prices continue to rise, gas prices are expected to follow, especially as summer travel heightens demand. Experts say we won't see uh, any relief anytime soon, but they have a few suggestions to save you money at the pump, like using UTA and rideshare when possible and keeping up with your car maintenance. Well, some fathers like to bond with their sons over things like baseball, but this father son duo spends their quality time 1000 feet in the air. Eight year old Sam Baker and his dad Joe just finished climbing the moonlight buttress in Zion National Park. Now keep in mind that's a 1200 foot climb. Sam's obsession with the sport comes from his parents who fell in love while climbing together. He is afraid of a few things. Why don't you show him the things you're afraid of? Spiders in sharks, but I'm glad there's no sharks up there.
Spiders and sharks, I feel you, Sam. Now, Sam says the best part about climbing is getting to spend time with his dad. We're told they'll be back at it again at the end of the summer. Sam will be the first eight-year-old to try climbing El Capitan, which is the biggest wall of its kind here in the U.S. All right, she went from crunching contracts to doing magic. A former property lawyer has found a new path and a new purpose as a pet psychic. ABC's Will Gans has the story. Check out what this cat said about his human brother. He said, I'm obsessed with brother, and I often just stare at him for a really long time. Nikki Vasquez is a full-time pet psychic. I talked to Cruz here, and I asked him if there was anything in his life he didn't like, and he said, mom's boyfriend. But then he said, don't worry, the feelings are mutual. He doesn't like me either. We can all do this. It's not just me. I learned. Just like with anything else, if we're stressed out, we're not going to be on our A-game, right? Just a few years ago, Nikki was not on her A-game, working as a lawyer, but totally miserable. I was at the point where I was doing animal communication part-time, law stuff part-time, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to excel further in the animal communication while still at the law firm. And I never would have imagined that a year later I'd be where I'm at today. Now, Nikki's got a waiting list thousands of clients long. I would say probably 60% of the animals are living and 40% are deceased. All she requires is a photo of the pet and a quiet place to do her reading. Do dogs tend to be more energetic and cats are kind of shady? Or is that me just projecting what I think everything would be like? <laughs> that is you totally projecting and I'm not calling you out. The cat sounds the same as the horse, as the bunny, as the gecko, as the cow, but they all have different personalities. Nikki says she's been able to help pets with everything from communicating toothaches and qualms with their nicknames to helping heartbroken pet owners navigate through grief. This isn't for everyone and I'm not here to convince anyone of anything, but it's like it's possible and we can all do it. Nikki says she takes about 10 minutes before each session to get into a meditative state, which is why she couldn't read my dog, Archie, during our interview. Yeah, I asked, but she did say he's okay with me calling him handsome all the time, which is good because I do it all the time. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. All right, let's move on to this one. Auctioneers call it the holy grail of uh, sports collectibles. A one of a kind LeBron James trading card is expected to sell for more than six million dollars at auction. Come on, six million dollars for all a trading for, card. Yeah, I get it's cars. cool. Get a house, go on vacation, <laughs> get a car. It's do this something. logo man card. How cool is that? Does that not look like nine million dollars? Kind of runs like the Mona Lisa. Like it's so small and it's worth, you know, obviously millions of dollars. A little bit different, but like I'm, not, I'm unimpressed. I'm okay. surprised they didn't turn this into an NFT. <laughs> oh, that's a good point, too. Well, there's, there's patches on here, though, uh, from LeBron when he was uh, with the Cavs, mm -hmm. uh, with the Heat, with the Lakers, uh, and with card collectors, too. So when this was issued, it set off a hunt among collectors. It had some likened to, to searching for the Willy Wonka golden ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? So if you're spending $6 million on a card. So it's like, card. I have a LeBron James yeah. trading card. I don't know. Oh. That's the new song. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I was Should just saying this Thomas? morning. If you're spending that much money on a card, you you have lots of money. That's true. Well, yeah. You're not like a just average Joe. But I, I said before, if you're going to spend six million dollars, just invest that money into your local sports team and become, yeah, co-owner. Okay. Yeah, or courtside tickets for the finals. Anything. Solid advice. I don't know. Just a few thoughts. All right, switching gears now. <laughs> for all you cheese lovers out Lay here, lay on the cheese. If yeah. you <laughs> like this next story, you're sick. Take a look at this. <laughs> Rude. Velveeta like is it. launching a limited edition cheese scented nail polish. I love it. You don't love it. You haven't smelt it yet. I can't. Is it even out yet? Yeah, Give me actually, the you can get it Jillian. in stores right now. Okay, it comes in two colors a red one named Finger Food mm. and a yellow one named La Dolce Velveeta. Ah. This is maybe the grossest part. Is the red like Rotel? <laughs> and the other? Maybe. <laughs> There's also Should nail stickers again? of cheese and the words drip and creamy on them. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You guys, come on. This is, n this is you crazy You got to post it to the Instagram to get that drip. Yeah. Ugh. It's all about the likes, yeah? What would you do if, like, you went on a first date and you, like, just get the smell of cheese? And she's like, oh, it's my nail polish. I mean, it's better than the... Uh, then you know that she likes cheese. Acidic smell of nail polish. I feel like nail polish smells gross right when you put it on, though. Well, it doesn't really have a scent once you put it yeah. on. If you have your date that's got the nail polish on, then you take them to get some fondue because they like cheese so much. Yeah, or it's, what if you get, like, uh, they're crazy. cheese they're on nuts. your spaghetti, because then you can be like, oh, this is my spaghetti with cheese on it. Like, it has a little Parmesan scent, mm -hmm. you know? 
You chicken, get, chicken just, parm? You can disguise it. <laughs> this, is, this is sick. Okay, what's not sick? Is our weather. Boom. What do you got? No, but it is toasty. And yeah. it's it gonna is. be it's gonna be hot the next few days. And the heat's gonna be building in northern Utah. Monument Valley is looking pretty good, a beautiful sunrise. And this morning you're not finding too many issues as you head off to work or school. And then along the Wasatch Front, just got some high clouds, but eventually we're going to see a daytime high of around 90 degrees, 93 Thursday, 95 on Friday and on Saturday. We could flirt with records and we could potentially get close to 100 degrees. So it's going to be getting quite hot and down in St. George, the temperature will be above 100 degrees basically through Sunday with it possibly getting as high as 107 or 108 by Saturday. So the heat don't mess around down in southern Utah. It is going to be quite hot for sure. Now as we check our traffic out there this morning, we're still following that fatal 21st and 6th in South Salt Lake. Meanwhile, we got an accident on I-15 northbound. We do have a vehicle fire and then it also an accident in Ogden off the interstate. But so far this morning, None of the accidents on the interstates have caused too much of a slowdown. Salt Lake City Dogden, 30 to 32 minutes. That's right on time. And if you want to take your weather with you on the go, just download the Pinpoint Weather app or the Apple App Store, Google Play, or simply scan the QR code right there on your screen. So we are in the time for 80s, 90s, 100s, the rest of the summertime, yeah? Where we'll be cranking it up. We'll get some relief early next week with mm -hmm. the cold front, so we'll probably drop back down to the 70s, but it's going to be hot. Summer's here. And any nasty inversion this week, you think? We'll be looking at air quality, but not inversion yeah. air quality. We're good. good. It feels like summer. Elevated particulate Get to the matter. baby birthday, Jillian. We got to do this. Trying, so cute. trying. Yeah. Baby birthday. Today, we are celebrating Troy Oliver Knudsen the third. The third. So Look cute. Look at this Happy guy. Happy birthday, buddy. The big eyes. He's going to be a heartbreaker. He's adorable. <laughs> He's turning one year old today. So happy birthday to you. And don't forget, we love celebrating all your birthdays out there. So make sure to send us those baby pictures. Email it to news at abc4.com and put in the subject line, baby birthday. Day. Okay, when we see Jillian Smoker tomorrow, she'll have her Velveeta nail polish on. Never. I won't do it. And you guys shouldn't either. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and on midday.